the record, two and one in the whack. Tulsa is hoping homecoming can get them back on the winning track. The Hurricane aggressive defense plans on stopping the Hawaii run and shoot offense in its tracks. Hawaii and Tulsa in whack football next. of the University of Tulsa for homecoming at Skelly Stadium. Today, the Golden Hurricane of the University of Tulsa at home to take on the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors in black football. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Land, along with Gary Reasons. Glad to have you aboard on this great day for college football here in Tulsa. And what a great story Hawaii has become. 0-12 a year ago, new head coach June Jones, the turnaround immediate. They are quite a story. Well, June Jones is the big story out there. He has got these team believing in themselves. They say that winning is contagious. Actually, they have got that winning way going, winning four ball games this year. I tell you, the turnaround has been tremendous for this football team. June Jones has surrounded himself with a quality staff. They are getting things done in a big way for Hawaii. He likes to run that run-and-shoot offense, and he said when he arrived in Honolulu, there were not a lot of players that fit his style. He did find a trigger man, though, in quarterback Dan Robinson. Well, Dan Robinson, the senior quarterback, a 25-year-old quarterback, Bill, came out of spring ball as a number one quarterback. He was really the only quarterback he had in camp that fit his system. He runs that run-and-shoot offense very well. He's a senior. He leads the whack in conference, the whole conference in passing in total offense, he's a quality quarterback for the Rainbows. And certainly a contrast at the signal calling position today. For the University of Tulsa, veteran Michael Wall is out with a season-ending knee injury last week against TCU. That puts it in the lap of Josh Blankenship, a true freshman. He's got great tools, but he's still relatively untested. Well, Josh Blankenship is a quality quarterback, a young quarterback, though. It's his first collegiate start, as you said, Bill. He has to lead this team today. He has to find a way to get the Hurricanes in the win column for Dave Brader and his team because he needs to lead this team. He has the tools, the size, the ability. He throws the ball very well. He has a very quick release. Should be exciting to watch him play. All right, Coach Dave Brader said he's had a great week of practice. We'll find out if he's up to the test of the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Homecoming in Tulsa. You're going to see it right here on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. We started off with a whack contest and the Golden Hurricane of the University of Tulsa to take on Hawaii and June Jones. Well, you see he's got the lay around the neck, the head coach of the Rainbow Warriors. And earlier today, he also was sans the sock, so he brought all of Hawaii with him. It was a delight to visit with him last night. He's really got this team headed the right direction. Well, he's a quality coach for this team, and he's doing a good job with him. Dave Rader on the other sideline for the Hurricanes. Things have not gone well for him. He's looking for a win in the worst way, Bill. Yeah, Tulsa trying to get on the winning track after a season-opening win over Southwest Missouri State. Five straight in the loss column, including a pounding last week against TCU, 56-17 down in Fort Worth. But most folks around this program will tell you that the morale, particularly considering the record, is very, very good and that these guys are trying to pull together. They feel that they can compete every Saturday within the WAC, even though the scores may not have indicated that. And certainly Hawaii respects what is going on here at Tulsa. And June Jones said that, hey, forget that record. This team has been in and had the chance to make plays in every outing. Ernest will kick it off as Lumford and Garland are deep for Hawaii. And we're underway here at Skelly Stadium. And they'll bring it out from two yards deep to the 10 and slipping inside the 15-yard line. And the University of Hawaii will start in a bit of a hole after that return that time for Jamal Garland. So the Rainbow Warriors come out with Dan Robinson, a senior from American Fork, Utah, went to Rick's Utah Junior College, a 97 medical red shirt because of shin splints, and now after a junior season in which he threw for 2,100 yards, he's in his senior campaign. And he sets him up first and 10 from their 14-yard line here on the opening series. Quick drop in the run and shoot, and the drop pass that time. Let's take a look at who's up front. They have a huge offensive line. Every offensive lineman over 300 pounds for 
the uh, University of Hawaii, anchored by Noah, who is starting his 43rd straight game. The rest of the group, Carter, their leading receiver in that group with 41 grabs for 703 yards. We'll give you the Tulsa defensive look in just a moment. It is second down and 10. Bill Land, Gary Reasons with you on Fox Sports Net. Hawaii's opening possession from the 14. Stutzman, the man that was in motion with a handoff to the tailback and across to the 17-yard line. It'll be third and long for the Rainbow Warriors after the tackle by Odom. And let's look a look at Chris Odom, the junior, from Poto and joined by Taylor Hewitt and sophomore Drew McLaughlin. The linebackers, McClure, the senior in the middle, Farley playing on a bum knee. We'll see how long he can go today. And in the defensive backs, Franz is the leader. The senior has a couple of INTs for the University of Tulsa. They'll play five D-backs most of the time. It may go to six, so we'll see a lot of different folks in there today defensively for the Hurricane. Third and seven. Robinson on his heel. Almost picked off at the 43-yard line. That may be typical of what's happened to Tulsa. Chris Miller is the one that let it go through his fingertips, the junior from St. Louis. But the crowd responds. The defense holds in the opening set. Well, this is a good series here for Tulsa to start off defensively. They're going to have to hit Robinson a lot today, put some pressure on him. Got to pressure that quarterback a lot of this run and shoot offense. Get him off timing, off mark, which was the case there, Bill. University of Hawaii to kick it away, and that means the punter is on, and Chad Shrout, senior from Lancaster, California. Low snap, low kick. And Tulsa is going to get great field position, even though Hawaii gets a nice roll. It'll be Tulsa ball on the 41-yard line. What about the keys to winning here today, Gary? And first of all, for the Rainbow Warriors. Well, most important, this team, they need to play well early in the ball game here coming into Tulsa, traveling on the road. That's always a key when you travel. You have to play well. And as you see, Josh Blankenship, the quarterback, coming out for the hurricane. But for Hawaii to be successful, I think they have to win the quarterback differential. They've got a senior going against a young freshman in Blankenship, and obviously they have to win that battle. Blankenship. Two touchdowns, five INTs. He is 24 of 68. He has played in five of the six games. We did not see him in the game against Rice that was on Fox Sports Net. And he came on in relief of Wall, who went down early against TCU. Hands off to Mosley. And Mosley, their leading rusher on the year at 4.2 per carry, gets a couple across midfield and to the 47-yard line. And up front, Douglas coming off a concussion, ready to go. Wienauer is a guy who's also suffered some injuries, but the real leader of that front group for TU. And the backs and receivers, Damon Savage moving up the career charts. He is number four right now, 2,559 yards to his credit receiving-wise for Damon Savage. And it is second down and six after a gain of four for Mosley. A fake to Mosley. Blankenship rolling out. Got a man, and it's complete for a first down inside the 35-yard line. As the University of Tulsa will move the chains, Gerald Smith makes his 20th reception of the year. Sean Bell Tucker made the tackle. We see at the bottom of your screen here, that's going to be Smith. He's going to run all the way up and outside. It's a bootleg pass. The quarterback's going to roll out of, out of the pocket. Nobody in his face. Good fake, good play action. Smith comes back for the football. Good grab and a good positive play for the quarterback for his first throw. Hurricane first and 10. They mark it at the 36-yard line. And Tulsa, after the 11-yard pickup, 12.55 to go first period, opening possession for the Hurricane. Blankenship hands off to Mosley. Good forward progress after it looked like he was going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. He falls forward to the 33-yard line where Jeff Ulbrich makes the tackle. More on him in a moment. Up front, Sims, Tuioti, and Paul, the senior defensive end, one of the standouts out of Anaheim, California. He's got a couple of sacks this year. The linebackers, Warren, Ulbrich, and Kempert. And Ulbrich is the leader of that group, along with Yafet Warren. And in the secondary, D. Miller is a guy that June Jones has gone on and on about. He's got an interception as well as 44 tackles this year. Second down and seven after the pickup of three on the first down carry. Blankenship straight back to pass this time. Good protection off 
the fingers, I believe, of the intended receiver on the play, but a little bit high, and it goes incomplete to Savage. Well, that's something they're going to have to do today, Bill, is protect for this young quarterback as he tries to throw the ball down the field to Savage. Pretty good job there. He had enough time to throw the football, just got a little bit high for Savage, so he couldn't come up with the catch. As you see his numbers a week ago, he came in in the first series of the game. Michael Wall went out with an injury, had to lead that team. He actually completed the drive. They got a score in the first drive, and you know, he has the tools to be a good quarterback, and Dave Rader has a lot of hopes for that young man. 37 for the Hurricane now. Ball on the 33 of Hawaii. Hawaii, three and out, coming it away into a good field position. Protection and a great grab inside the 20-yard line. Oh, my goodness. What a catch that time by Savage, and what a bullet for Mike and Chip to deliver. Well, the key to this play here is the release of the receiver off the line of scrimmage. He gets inside the defender. Blankenship does a good job of delivering inside between the hash marks. Usually a lot of bodies in there, but nobody there in front of the receiver. Savage goes up for the catch and comes down with it. 15 yards on the pickup to Damon Savage. You see what he's done this year at Tulsa. Moving the chains again, first and 10 from the 18. Nothing doing this time. Mosley. Well, it looked like maybe someone got a face mask. You see him motioning toward the official that, yeah, someone grabbed my mask. Ulbrich made the tackle. Uh, there was a hand up around the helmet, obviously, and Ulbrich may have been the culprit on that. May have gotten away with one for the Rainbows. You know, Bill, early in this game, I think that one of the things that has to be important here for Tulsa is to really feature Mosley at the tailback position. Take the pressure off of the young quarterback, and they've got to establish a running game. They've tried it a few times today with a little bit of success. Second and eight. Blankenship rolls out to the left side and wide open inside the 10 as Muther, Carey. I beg your pardon, Keith Carey, the junior from Dallas out of Lake Highlands High School, made the reception, and D. Miller brings him down. Tulsa, and this is not unusual. They have opened the game often, looking impressive. Well, a little blue pass here. Keith, Keith Carey, the tight end, he just goes to the outside. And everybody goes with the play fake, and Carey's about probably the faster tight end on the squad. It's a good job getting some positive yardage. They're going to try to spread the ball around. This offense is somewhat similar to Hawaii's that they use a lot of different personnel formation for personnel in the, in the game, three and four wide receivers. Fifth reception of the year for Carey. First and goal from the eight-yard line for Tulsa. Mosley. Dashing and down in the end zone. Mosley scores, and the Hurricane is on the board with 10.35 to go first quarter. Bill, if you're going to have success running the football, your offensive center, Steve Schiller, Steve Lido with the right guard who's back in there. Watch him get the blocks. And uh, Mosley does a good job of cutting back, and he has his pads low enough to get into the end zone. Good job up front. The guards and the, both guards and the center blocking on that play. And now for the point after, Tulsa will come on to try to make it 7-0. Ernest lines up. Chris on the year. And hold, they're going to do it again. Let's see what the call is here. For the snap, delay on the offense, five yard penalty, defeat the snap. In case you weren't awake, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> for our Hawaii viewers, as uh, you crawl out of the uh, sack and get ready for a little lunch, uh, hello. And now they move it back, and Ernest, who is four or five on the year. This one is good. And Tulsa makes it seven to nothing. And a little scrape going on. We'll be back. Stay with us. Tulsa up seven nothing. A bold styling and driving statement. A world-class, no-compromise sports sedan and a marvelous bargain to boot. It's all systems go at your Southern California Nissan dealer. Right now, compare the world-class Maxima 2000 to the competition. Drive them all at one time in one place and see for yourself. Take the test drive challenge today and experience Maxima 2000. There's simply no other car like it. Test drive 2000. Now at your Southern California Nissan dealer. Air New Zealand presents the Difference Down Under Gridiron Classic. 
In the NFL, there are 11 players per team on the field during the game with players being changed or substituted at will as long as they report to the officials and do it in the allotted time. Now in rugby, no more than 15 players with up to four replacements shall play a match. You know how many players can be on the field in Australian rules football? 18 with four interchangeable players. The Difference Down Under has been brought to you by Paul Mitchell Rogaine Extra Strength for Men. Hey, what you doing this Sunday? Get more pregame power one hour earlier with NFL This Morning. These guys all made their name on the Nike Tour. Who's the next champion? Santa Anita Live brings thoroughbred racing to net two. The Kings rule. Ziggy Palfy and the boys battle Owen Nolan and the Sharks. And if you missed anything this weekend, our team's got it covered. Homecoming crowd in Tulsa likes what they've seen so far. Mosley's eight-yard run has set the Hurricane up 7-0, and for the fourth consecutive game, Tulsa's opening possession has resulted in a touchdown. Unfortunately for the Hurricane, it's all they've got in some cases since that point. Dave Rader wants to see that turn around with more consistency, and he said, that's one of the things that keeps bringing me back with energy every week. We know we can do it, and we start off like that. We've got to do it time and time again to avoid the turnover. Well, they executed Mosley, obviously going to run the ball for him, but I think and most importantly, Josh Blankenship got his feet wet as a starter and got the first drive under his belt. That's a big, big plus for him. All right, Ernest with a kickoff. And again, Hawaii with Garland deep. Going to bring this one out, too. Heard him last time. Right up the middle. Breaks a tackle across the 25 and out to the 30-yard line. Tulsa wants fumble. Not going to get it, though. Whistle have blown before. And Hawaii, much better field position, down seven to nothing. And there is a flag on the field as the Hawaii Keys. Let's talk about those, Gary. Well, we talked about the quarterback. They've got Robinson, the senior quarterback. I think they're going to win that battle. He's tried to today. And special teams, they've played extremely well. They lead this conference in numerous areas on special teams. And they want to get off to a quick start here, which has not happened for the for the Hurricanes coming out. Well, the Hurricanes started with their score, and the Rainbows didn't do that on their first drive. June Jones looks over as now we wait for the call here. Gonna march it back. Let's force the light conduct on the return team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Well, and certainly uh, that gives you reason for June Jones' pained expression. The uh, special teams has been a highlight for his ball club, and they don't need to operate out of a hole for a second straight possession, but they will. Now, Hawaii first and 10 from its own 15-yard line. Robinson, the short drop in the run and shoot, finds a man at the 20. How about the Tulsa Keys today to victory? Well, obviously, the offensive line, I think, has to protect that young quarterback, and they've done that early in the ballgame. He's been able to throw it. And feature Mosley, the tailback, he's got to run the football effectively. Dave Rader told me he felt that they need to get into the five yards per play. Every play from line of scrimmage to average that on offense to be successful. They're currently in the low fours. And the penalty against the Golden Hurricane will set up Hawaii with the first down, so that makes that problem on the kickoff just about a wash. First and 10 for the Rainbow Warriors on the 25. Hawaii at 4-2 after a season opening loss to Southern Cal. They won four in a row for Eastern Illinois, Boise State, SMU, and UTEP before losing to Rice. The 45 and out to the 50-yard line. Carrying the football, Thompson, the sophomore from Honolulu, 5'10", 2'12", and he picks it to midfield. Now, this is one of the most important plays in this offense. It's a screen to the tailback all the way. He rolls. There's no protection for him. Watch here. He's going to drop the screen. Good job of taking the hit and delivering the ball to Afatia Thompson. He, hey, this is his 10th catch of the year, and all of them been on screen plays. He's got his big lineman out front. It's one of the complimentary plays for this offense, and we're going to see that time and time again. Thompson many times starts the game because he's considered the better blocker, and then they'll bring in Weaver, who's the better runner. And Tulsa showing them why they need the blocking as the pressure put on Robinson that time. And Philip Abode, Abode, a junior, who's playing a lot today in place of a Sean Farley, who's got the spring knee. 
Well, when you throw the ball quite a bit, your defense has to come in. You see a Bode number eight. He comes in right in Robinson's face and gets his hand up. He's going to deflect the ball as he's throwing it. Hey, well, if you can't get to the quarterback, go ahead and get your hand up. You're going to make a good play some of the time, and a Bode did that that time, Bill. A Bode, 11 career sacks, so it's not like he isn't familiar with what's going on defensively. Carter with the reception. 45. Hit hard, but hangs on to the football inside the 35-yard line. Dwight Carter, the Los Angeles senior. The reception from Robinson, and now Hawaii moving the chains. Understand, this is the best passing team in the league at 333 yards per game, and Carter, one of the big reasons. Well, Carter's the number one receiver in the conference. He's going to take a screen pass here to the outside. His linemen are going to come out. His outside receivers are going to block for him. Hey, he's got a little seam to get into, and he's got enough speed to get down the field and make a big play. Dwight Carter's a big part of this offense for the Hurricane. I mean, for the Rainbow. Rainbow's average of 24 points a game. Fifth in the whack. Robinson, first and 10 here at the 33 of Tulsa. In trouble, escapes one man. Completes it, and a nice grab made that time by Jamal Garland out of Spring Valley, California. As Garland makes the grab, Spencer Braggs makes the tackle. Braggs, a veteran from Lawton, Oklahoma, 5'7", senior. Well, this offense, the run and shoot bill, it's predicated on reads. And the quarterback, Dan Robinson, has to read June Jones's system very well, and he does that. He delivers on timing. They stretch the, the, the defense vertically as well as horizontally, and we'll see that a little bit today. Let me correct that. Uh, Lelly making the reception, not Garland. Ashley Lelly, 6'3", 175, a freshman from Bellflower, California. Robinson hammered and may be called for grounding. He was sacked. And draws the flag, and TU's defensive pressure, Franz, coming on the blitz, led the charge. Well, left side of your screen here, Todd Franz, number four, the cornerback. It's a cat. It's called a corner blitz. He comes untouched, and you see Robinson trying to throw the ball away. He's in the grass. Good call by the official. That was grounding, not, a, not an attempt to throw the football. Let's down. Third down. Now third and long for June Jones ball club. Jones, who made the decision to lead the San Diego Chargers with a firm commitment to become the head coach after finishing as the interim coach last year to go to Hawaii. He had played at Hawaii, been assistant coach at Hawaii. He knew the deal there, and he is excited to be the head coach of the Rainbow Warriors and help turn their program around. Needs a big play from Robinson and crew here on third and 15. Escapes that charge again. Not this time, though. The flag comes and the helmet goes. Robinson smothered again. Credit the Tulsa defense that time, that front four, front five, pressuring the quarterback, doing a good job. You see the holding call going against the offense. Everything's going to break down for Robinson here because the linemen are doing a good job of getting their hands up and getting in front of him, making his passing lanes. He can't see it. Then it just, the protection breaks down. A good play by the Tulsa defense. And what looked like a real good scoring opportunity for Hawaii fizzles thanks to the defensive pressure from the Hurricane. Now, Hawaii drop back in drop back in punt formation. Braggs goes deep for Tulsa. The line of scrimmage is the 40-yard line. And the kick by Shroud. A dandy and will be down inside the five. Hawaii getting what they wanted in that part of the game. There's that special teams we've talked about for the Rainbow Warriors. We're back with Tulsa leading 7-0. We didn't build the new full-size Tundra to take on other trucks. We built it to take on anything. Introducing the new full-size Toyota Tundra. Have we gone too far, or have others not gone far enough? 
So, Doctor, hmm? you've been studying the effects of Red Bull for months. What exactly have you discovered? Energy boundaries and biorhythmic fluctuations can make it mm. difficult to maintain a baseline rating of muscular contraction and mm. transmissible impulses. Of course, you need mm. the oxyribonuclear acidity and orbital phases of mm. gravitational fluctuations can indeed result in a fibromyalgic Red Bull type of situational relevance as well. But if we've calibrated the amount of available, mm. we shall mm. have uh, tolerances. Can you say that in English? Simple little man. Red Bull gives you wings. Domino's Pizza Lovers, tell us how you like your crust. I want a crust that's really classic. Our hand toss is like that. We like it tender, warm, and thick. Our deep dish crust is like that. I'm really into the thick. Domino's, how you like it. Check out Domino's Game Day Special. Get two medium pizzas with up to three toppings for just $13.99. That's two medium oven fresh pizzas with up to three toppings delivered hot to your door for just $13.99. Call Domino's now. A full hour of pregame power. NFL this morning, Sunday on Fox Sports Net. Downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. Whack football today with a homecoming here in Hurricane Country at Skelly Stadium. Tulsa with an early lead, 7 0. I'm Bill Lamb along with Gary Reasons and glad to have you with us. 7.53 to go in the first quarter. The Hurricane scoring on its first possession. A little bit different deal here, though. After the great punt, the Shroud sets him up to you on the two yard line, first and 10, and Mosley lines up in the end zone. Blankenship falls as he hands it off, and very fortunate that he got rid of the football and that it went into the stomach of Mosley. Yeah, your offensive line here, they've got to produce. They've got to run the ball out. They've got to create some, some space here for this offense to operate. They've got to move that war Rainbow Warrior defense out a little bit to get some space, and almost a big miscue that time on the handoff. Head coach Dave Rader looking for his 50th win. This is 12th year here at the University of Tulsa. Last year, a 4-7 and seven campaign that saw victories over Oklahoma State, 35-20, to 20, and a season-ender, 35-0 over Wyoming. And around that, some ugliness. So you really don't know what this team's going to do every Saturday. Mosley bulls his way out, got some push from the offensive line that time to the five-yard line, and that's going to make it third down and seven coming up for TU. Well, you're going to have a young quarterback now in a pressure situation, back dropping back into his end zone, possibly to throw the ball a third and long, Bill. This is a situation where you want this quarterback not to make a mistake. This is a part of the field that could be really dangerous if he throws a poor pass. And let's see if Hawaii comes on with the blitz. Third and seven from the five. Blankenship checking off. And tosses it out of the flat to Savage. He's in trouble, though. And Savage going forward and stays in bounds. He is short of the 10-yard line, and Tulsa's going to have to kick it away. And nice defensive set for the University of Hawaii. Yeah, and a good speed there from the inside, moving on to make the play on Savage. Three or four of the defensive players just got to the sideline, made a good play on the outside, and Savage could not get up the field. Yeah, speed is the thing that Dave Rader mentioned to me when he talked about the Hawaii team. He said they can really run to the football. He said any time you got speed, you've got a chance to have a pretty good defensive team. And the Warriors showed it there. So Tulsa will kick it out of the end zone, and that means Casey Lipscomb, who's averaging 40.9 per kick. He booms this one to the 45, and Garland is going to be tackled as he leans forward to midfield. Good coverage by Tulsa. For a moment, it looked like Lipscomb might have outkicked his coverage, but they hustled down to make the play. And the 47-yard kick in Hawaii with the turn will set up at midfield. Well, if you haven't caught NFL this morning, catch it tomorrow at 10 a.m. That is quite a group, and get more pregame power on the one hour earlier NFL this morning. And Mike Shanahan, the head coach of the Denver Broncos, will be the guest tomorrow. We'll find out how they're trying to resurrect things after a dismal start. And Levy, Chris Myers, as well as Jackie Slater and Chris Spielman bring it all to you. NFL this morning, 10 o'clock on Fox Sports Net on Sunday. Garland, slow to get up, and now is okay. He'll be off on his own power. And Hawaii is the one that gets good field position this time. We got 5.41 to go in the first, 7-0 Tulsa. 
Tulsa's TD. The drive started on the 49-yard line. On the ground this time as the Warriors give it to Avatia Thompson. Thompson averaging 4.7 a carry. He's topped by Chris Odom. Well, that tailback spot for this offense for Hawaii, it's really key because he has to do three things, Bill. He has to be able to run the football, obviously. He has to catch the ball on the screen, which we saw earlier, and he has to be able to run the football. But most importantly, he has to block. Quarter, the tailback in this system has to step to the side and take on blitzers, rushers, big defensive tackles at times. These two tailbacks that we'll see for Hawaii have done a pretty good job for Jim Jones. Second down and four. Thompson, first down and more as he rips it off to the 35-yard line. And Thompson will move the chains for the Warriors. Ashton Farley made the tackle. Farley, leading tackle with 41 coming in for TU. Well, it's just a little dive play to the outside. Going to go behind Noah, the right tackle, and Kanoa, the right guard. It was a good job getting his pads down. Good positive play. Hey, you need your tough tailbacks to get yardage like that. You know, this defense actually has played pretty well against the run bill this year. They've just had some, some big plays that have hurt them. And... Here in the ball game, they don't want to have any of those big plays again with this Hawaii offense. Yeah, they, the stats are a bit misleading. The big plays have run those numbers up. As this one handed off to Thompson, and he's stuffed after about a yard. They are seventh in the league, allowing 234 yards per game. TCU last week got 356, but they got this guy named Tomlinson, who was the nation's best right now, and he can ruin your numbers in a hurry. Well, those numbers can go askew, especially if you got a quality tailback. And they obviously feature that running back at TCU. Odom and Farley making the tackle that time. How big are they up front? Huge. Averaging 6'4 and 315. And it's a veteran group as well. You got Clem on one side who started 18 games. You got Noah on the other side who started out 43 games. Wide open and complete inside the 10-yard line. And down to the five is Stutzman. Craig Stutzman, a sophomore from Honolulu, makes the reception. He came in with 30 grabs and 273 yards. Well, you're going to see him here. He's in the slot. He's the slot receiver, the number two. He's going to go down and just go work to the outside. Quarterback does a nice job of just taking the time, looking at the defense. It's a zone coverage. He's going to get between the safeties. Watch the soft spot of the defense right here. He's right in the middle of it. He does a good job of delivering the ball on timing. Stutzman does a good job getting some positive yardage. Look at the leg strength that he has. He's tugging him with him. Now Hawaii after the 29-yard pickup. First and goal from the five, and they try to pull it in with Thompson. He almost gets it inside the one-yard line. Johnson made the last stop on the Thompson or the uh, play and this time the whole front line up there led also by Miller and Taylor here's what Hawaii's done inside the 20 in the red zone 22 opportunities 10 touchdowns and pretty balanced there and then six field goals 16 of 22. Hey, Second and goal from the one Thompson did he cross the plane? No. Well, so, without the tight end of the ball game, Bill, for this offense, they really have to run the ball between the tackles and the defensive line for Tulsa did a nice job. They got their pads low behind, underneath those offensive guards and centers. The tailback has nowhere to go because if they go to the outside, the corner is too short. The speed of the defense can come in the backfield, so they have to run straight ahead. Now they bring him in. Thompson finds an angle and goes through to the end zone. Touchdown, Hawaii. Afadia Thompson gets his second touchdown of the year, and the Rainbow Warriors have pulled within one. Hawaii makes it 7 6, 220 to go. Well, we talk about the tight end. They bring Vince Manai out of the left tackle, left tight end spot, and they open a big hole on the outside for the tailback. Have to have a little bit of a rink, a little bit different instead of running that run and shoot every single time, and they do so for the score. And on for the point after, Eric Hannum. And Hannum's kick is true. He's 16 of 16 this year, and Hawaii's tied it up at 7 with 2.20 to go in the first. Stay with us. I'm Fox Sports I'm calling about the used car you have for sale. Yeah? How many miles does it have? Well, you know, it's got a few miles, but they're just highway miles. Why take chances buying a used car? A certified used vehicle from your Toyota dealer goes through a 128-point inspection and carries a six-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. You even get 24-hour roadside assistance for a full year. Was the car ever in an accident? Uh, define accident. So 
see your Toyota dealer, where the best new cars make the best used cars. The Omega Threat Management Group, experts in the management of stalking, workplace violence, and executive protection, providing a full array of protective services for clients worldwide. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Seven-seven, Hawaii and Tulsa. First quarter, 2:20 remaining here at Skelly Stadium. Bill Land, along with Gary Reasons, hope you're enjoying the action. A nice. I mean, just a perfect fall afternoon. Temperature in the 60s, but there is a breeze here today. And give Hawaii maybe a, a pat on the back or two for taking that drive into the wind, Gary, because I think it's a, had a little effect on this game. The kickoff and Tulsa, Mosley to the 30. And to the 34-yard line, a loose football, but Tulsa maintains possession. And these two teams want it, I'll tell you that, folks. And speaking of a couple that want it, coming up later on Fox Sports Net, Texas A&M ranked 13th in the country in a Big 12 battle in Norman against the Oklahoma Sooners in Bob Stoops' first year. And then later on, 9-15, we move to the Pac-10, Oregon and Arizona. And Arizona recovering a bit after that rocky start. They had lofty expectations in the desert, and they're trying to get back to the Rose Bowl. At 9-15, that one comes your way. Player down on the field for the University of Hawaii, I believe. Yes. Can't get an ID yet. 2.10 to go here in the first period. And Tulsa, when they restart, will have it on the 33-yard line, a first and 10. This is their second road game. They won their opener against SMU 20 to nothing. And injured player is Flex Armstrong, a junior from Merced, California, out of City College of San Francisco. And he is helped off. 5'7, 165, a junior. June Jones goes over to visit with him. As Blankenship comes back on the field. Hawaii scoring drive, capped off by Thompson's one-yard run. They started at midfield. It took 321 to go the 50 yards. 21 yards coming on the ground, and Thompson with the TD. Here's Tulsa now, first to 10. Blankenship escapes one defender, finds a wide open man. 40, 45, and Carey continues to roll. Or Muther, beg your pardon, Pete Muther. Who had knee surgery in midseason in his back, his seventh reception of the year, Jackson made the tackle. Well, you're going to have your tight end come across the field, and it's going to be a bootleg pass. Josh Blankenship does a good job here of eluding the rush to the outside. You'll see him watch a tight end come across the field, get behind the linebackers. He's going to find him in this area right here and catch the football. Good job by Muther working down the field, getting right in front of the quarterback, and good execution. Well, talk about open. 16 yards on the play, and Tulsa first and 10 at the 49. The Hurricane 49. Why showing blitz. Let's see. They back off. Blanket chip in trouble. And he'll be stopped for a loss on the play of a yard or two. Josh is brought down. Come in with 23 carries, minus 10 yards. You take in the sack factor. He had a 26-yard run as his longest. And Kempfort and 
Iosua made the tackle that time. Mike Iosua. Bill, when I talked to Dave Rader about his quarterback, he told me that Josh Blankenship, you know, he's a young quarterback, but, you know, he had a lot of season. He played at Union High School here in Tulsa, did a very good job for that team. The quarterback of the, excuse me, the player of the year in Oklahoma a year ago as a high school player, he said he has the tools. The most impressive thing that he says he does is he knows how to run, do our running game and get the checks at the line of scrimmage. In trouble this time as Hawaii brings the heat. And Blankenship nailed on the 39. They're going to mark it at the 40-yard line. Well, they disagree. We'll see where they put it. Ulbrich comes on for the sack, and Ulbrich is a tear, his fifth sack of the year. Well, one thing a quarterback can't see all the time is the types of pressures that a defense has, and they just overload the one side here, and nobody picks him up. Ulbrich does a nice job getting into the backfield. He's a leading tackler in the conference. Number 44 is. He's a solid inside linebacker and makes a big play. And now third and 19 for the Hurricane. And there you see Ulbrich leading the league in tackles per game, and 11 of them coming for losses. This guy is everywhere. Here they come again after Blankenship. He got some time, but it's incomplete. Over the middle, and Donald Scholes, who's playing with bruised ribs, may have taken another shot there. And Tulsa will kick it away now. A little conservative play there for the quarterback, throwing third and long. He tries to throw it short underneath. Maybe his receiver will catch the ball and make a big play. But don't try to force your quarterback to throw one down the field where he could cause a big, big pop problem for his offensive team. Seven seconds to go in the period. And Tulsa will kick it with the win. So let's see if they take advantage of that as Lipscomb, a sophomore from Miami, Oklahoma, and there's a flag thrown at the 20-yard line on the receiving end of that Garland making the punt return. And Hawaii will take it over following the penalty, first to 10. But again, the Warriors commit the foul, and Hawaii had come in averaging 78 yards per game in penalties. 469 on the year in yardage. The illegal block on the receiving team, half the distance, one untimed down. Well, that's a unique thing in the rules. <laughs> You're going to play one more play for this quarter because it happened at the end of the play in the kicking game. The offense is going to execute now from their 10-yard line. It'll be an untimed down, Bill. I don't know if I've ever seen that. I've seen it a couple of I times. Mean, it it's is pretty, very it's unusual. Pretty unique, yeah. yeah. It happens at the end of the period like that. And Hawaii. Well, they had already made the walk to the sideline thinking they were going to go to the other end. They have to run back, get the defense on the field. And now whistles everywhere. And now we're going to have two on time. That's now. right. <laughs> well, we knew the two teams averaged, what, about 79, some passes between them a game. We knew we'd have a long game today. We didn't know that they just say no, no clock at all for a player two. <laughs> for the snap, illegal substitution on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Dave Rader upset about the call. Well, he, he may have a gripe here because he, they tried to start the play with while his team was on the sideline. They thought it might have been a change of quarters, and they didn't allow the defense time to get on the field. They had one player who thought he was in the group that came off the field. It really wasn't a problem, you know, a substitution where he was in the huddle. It was really from the sideline that the play, the play occurred. Yeah, I understand his position on this one. First down now and five. The ball from the 15 in this untimed play. And Thompson... May go all the way, stumbles across the 30, and then what would we have done? At what point in the game did he score? <laughs> you know, between no. quarters, between That's the first right. and second quarter. Uh -huh. All right, hang with us. A wild first quarter, Hawaii and Tulsa tied at seven. If you want quality, value, and convenience, all rolled into one neat carry-on bag, take a trip to Seven R's where you just might find a $375 ballistic nylon roller for around $175. And then take a trip to Arco for great gas, great prices, and convenience all rolled into one. With PayQuick, you can pay with cash right at the island. And get moving, because don't you have a flight to catch or something? Arco, official gasoline of the Pac-10. 
Want to see a neat trick? All I do is push a button, and we have a whole new Ford Windstar. You can get dual remote sliding rear doors, new side impact airbags, and even a rear bumper that tells you how close you are. The Windstar is just one of the reasons you'll want to visit your Ford dealer, especially now with all these great deals he's got on the 99s. A woman had to have thought this up. 1984, IHOP captured the hearts of millions with the Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity. 1997, IHOP makes headlines again with the Rudy Tooty 2. 1999, a nation swoons over the announcement of the Rudy Tooty Roundup. Their credo, a Rudy Tooty for everyone. Four breakfasts to choose from. Fruit topped pancakes, bacon, sausage, and eggs. Starting at just $2.99, only at IHOP. It all begs the question, what's next for IHOP? Start the second quarter, 7-7, Tulsa and the University of Hawaii here in Tulsa at Skelly Stadium. Bill and Gary Reasons with you as we get ready for second period action. And the Rainbow Warriors trying to go 3-1 and one in the league. You saw that score we had earlier, TCU and Rice battling. Rice unbeaten at the league at 3-0, and oh, taking on TCU today and tied 14. And Hawaii like to join that group. Here is Thompson rolling across the 45 and out to the 49-yard line. Thompson, big pickup on the play. Well, I'll tell you, the person who likes this the most is Dan Robinson. All he has to do is hand off and instead of throw the ball and get popped every time. Just watch the blocking up front by their offensive line, Manley Canoa. And Noah on the big tackle on the outside. The wide receivers do a good job of blocking for June Jones' offense. Apatia Thompson's doing a good job of running the football, Bill. And a 17-yard that nobody touched him until the tackle. First and 10 of the 49 for the Rainbow Warriors now. Tied at 7. Robinson. Incomplete. Out the flat. Trying to get the football that time to Stutzman. Well, how far has Hawaii come off last year's 0-12 campaign under first-year head coach June Jones? Take a look at where they rank in the Western Athletic Conference from 98 to right now in 99 in game number seven. This is impressive stats all the way across the board. You look at the offensive numbers, but also look at defense. They're playing on the defensive side of the ball. Defense pointer Greg McMackin has really changed the spirit of that defensive group as well. So there's a lot of positive things happen for Jim Jones and his ball club. Second and 10 here for the 49 for the Warriors. Robinson to Thompson. Almost sheds a tackle, but into Tulsa territory at the 47, and France made the tackle. Last night when visiting with Coach Jones, he made the comment that he said, I didn't know the impact of all the losses. And he said, after we lost to USC to make it 19 in a row, then the victory of Eastern Illinois, he said, there's guys crying in the locker room. He said, and then it hit me of what they've been through and how they've been scarred. And he said, the winning, it's just incredible how quickly it can turn around, but they remember what those bad days were like. Well, he said he wasn't there for those previous 18 losses, the one loss he did experience, getting in the win column, so it was very, very special for him and the, War and the Rainbow Warriors. Third down and five, ball on the 47. Incomplete as Tulsa puts the pressure on and well covered in the secondary. Well, two passes there by Dan Robinson. He missed the mark. Two of them fall short in front of the receivers. The one on the previous play, and that one out to Laley. Just didn't get it out there to him. The quarterback has to deliver in this offense for it to be successful. And Hawaii, one of four and third down conversions. They'll punt it away. Let's see if Chad Shroud can do as nice a job punting with the wind as he did into the wind where he put one down at the two-yard line the last time. Line of scrimmage is the 47 of Tulsa. And Shroud, this one goes over the receiver's head and rolls into the end zone. Flags the return man, lets it go smartly. And Tulsa will get it first and 10 on its own 20-yard line with 13.32 to go here in the second period. Well, our NBA fans, it's just around the corner for 
your teams and your part of the Fox Sports Net region and the Rockets and the Pistons. Sunday at 5.30 come your direction. Boy, that's a new look Houston Rocket team, isn't it, Gary? Oh, it sure <laughs> is. It's a whole different group down there trying to run the football. I mean, run the basketball <laughs> up and down the court. Well, it's so group. physical, sometimes they do run the football. <laughs> 30 Sunday, the Rockets and the Pistons, and check your listings for your part. Hand off to Mosley on the first down carry from the 20, and Mosley twists his way to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line for the University of Tulsa. Both teams seem to be selling in with what they're attempting to do. Obviously, Mosley's going to be a big feature for the Tulsa offense, take the pressure off of the young quarterback, run the football, let the quarterback make this, make good decisions, throwing the ball, shorter passes, and don't give him third and long situations. Get two, two, three, four, five yards on per play offensively, running the football and getting third manageable situations with the quarterback. Mosley last week, 18 carries, 62 yards. In a game, they lose uh, by the score of 56 to 17, but they still try and establish the run, so it's obvious to you wants to get that going. The pass is behind the receiver a bit savage that time, and it'll now be a third down and six for Tulsa. A lot of substitutions on the defensive side of the ball. They're going with a nickel and dime package. They have this three and four wide receivers we talked about for Tulsa on their offense. They come out with two tight ends, three wide receivers, four wide receivers. Don't be surprised if we start seeing five wide receivers from Tulsa because they use a lot of multiple personnel. Basic differences between what Tulsa's running and the run and shoot of Hawaii. Well, there are some similarities, but there's really some distinct things that run and shoot does to really exploit the defense. And it's a complete package where Tulsa does some very unique things, onesie, twosie times the ball. Game. Third down and six here. Ball on the 24. Blanket chip. Got protection. And out of bounds, incomplete. And Tulsa will have to kick it away. So Blankenship, rough series there after the five of seven first quarter action where he threw for 52 yards. Robinson was five of nine for 82 in the first period. Our score is even at seven, and Tulsa will kick it away. Lipscomb Garland is the deep man at the 42 of the Rainbow Warriors. And Lipscomb stands on his own 10. Garland, the returner for the for Hawaii, he leads the WAC conference in average per return on the punting in the punt return game. Timeout called by the University of Hawaii. 12:38 remaining to play in this first half of action of homecoming Saturday in Tulsa. Hurricane and the Warriors are even at seven. We're back with more on Fox Sports Net. Is that what I think it is? But it's just a... Try it. Incredible. The wireless internet right here in my hand. News, sports, even Yahoo, all on Sprint PCS. And the calls? Clear digital calls. Nothing else has changed. Do you think they're ready? Some are. Others will follow. Introducing the Sprint PCS Wireless Web. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own, and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results, and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41, and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Superstar Shortstops, Sunday at 9 on Fox Sports Net. Following the timeout, Tulsa will kick the football. Lipsko stands on his 10. Line of scrimmage is a 24. And Garland is the deep man for Hawaii. And out of bounds. And Lipscomb not happy with 
that. Going to be a under 30. Let's see what they mark it at the 47-yard line. A 23-yard kick for Casey Lipscomb, who came in averaging 40 of people. So good field position for Hawaii. Dan Robinson brings him back. Robinson. Certainly a veteran performer. Last year he threw for 328 yards against Michigan. He's seen some big time competition and this year coming in completing 54% of his passes for better than 1900 yards. First and 10 at the 47. Hands it off on the inside play to Stutzman and Stutzman almost the first down. Picks up seven or eight before McCory makes the tackle. And after our first quarter and now 12-16 to go in the second. Here's our whack game summary. Tulsa again, fourth straight game, scoring on the first possession. Hawaii comes back, though, with a 50-yard drive of its own with Thompson on the TD, and then the numbers for the two quarterbacks. Yeah, both quarterbacks are playing pretty well. No mistakes in those, those areas. Robinson had a couple throws the last series, didn't throw it very well, could have got it to his receivers. Needs to improve his accuracy throwing the football. Second and two for the Rainbows. And again, the handoff. And not a first down. Well, we'll see where they mark the football here. The carry that time, Shannon Harris. Harris, who had 28 receptions coming in. This time on the carry, is stopped. But going to move the chains. Good second effort that time. And first down, Hawaii. Well, you're going to see the receiver just come back. It's going to be a handoff. But watch right here. The defender stays at home. Does a good job of playing his keys, playing his responsibility. Doesn't go with the flow. Goes over, makes the play. Otherwise, it's a big play for Hawaii. Good defensive play that time. Staying and reading your keys. Andrew McLaughlin made the tackle. Sophomore from the Oklahoma City area, Midwest City. Robinson got time. Delivers before the hit, but way overthrown. Well covered by the Tulsa secondary that time. Again, looking for Harris on the play. Dan Robinson faced some pressure. Well, Robinson threw it, threw it up there. He thought if anyone's going to catch it, be his receiver. McCroy, the right corner, ran back with him. Did a good job in coverage that time. And the ball just sailed out of the end zone. This offense is going to test them down the field as well, Bill. They'll try to get the big play if they can, but it's not really designed to do that. They try to exploit the defense in different areas. Down, about 5, 10, 15 yards down the field between the zone defense that the, that the defense will give them. Second down and 10. Thompson to the 35 and upended there. Marked at the 33. And Keith and McCoy out of Westmore in the Oklahoma City area with a tackle. He's a freshman, 5'11", 177 pounder. More impressed with Thompson's work. We're told he was the blocker. He's done a nice job running today. Well, he has done a good job running the football for this Hawaii offense. And this tailback has to do that. They've got to find a way to run the football if they try to throw it every single down. The defense is going to catch up with them, but they're doing a good job of mixing it up. Third and seven. Crowd encouraging the Tulsa defense to make a stand here. Robinson, plenty of time, and got a man. First down inside the 20. And Hawaii moves the chains again, and it's Harris, the sophomore from Culver City, California. And McCory makes the tackle. Good job by Shannon Harris, doing a good job getting between the defenders. Settle down inside the zone. You watch the top right of your screen, you'll see the linebacker here. He's going to come back, and he's trying to cover receiver on the outside. You'll watch him here. He can't get his feet set to get back in to make the play. He's got the right knee. It's slow. You see him turn there. Shannon Harris does a good job of settling in the zone, coming back to the ball from Robinson. And Hawaii now, first and 10 at the 17. Robinson's numbers for the moment, 7 of 14 for 106 yards. And this Hawaii team just keeps coming at you. An impressive drive here. Minus 
scrimmage, the 12. Thompson, the handoff, breaks a tackle and bulls his way to the five-yard line. Avatia Thompson brought down by Mark Mallory, a freshman from Sand Springs, Oklahoma, 6'6", 251. Well, if Mallory doesn't make the tackle, he's going to take it to the house because the defense is in a blitz from the outside and all the everyone else is to the outside covering the receivers. Good job that time by Mallory hanging on, getting when he got through the hole and hanging on to the tailback. As you see Avatia's numbers on the day, pretty good for a, for a tailback and a run-and-shoot offense. Bill. Yeah, Thompson, impressive. And the blocking, that big offensive line really starting to shove its way around. Second and three from the five. Thompson looking for the hole. He lost the football, but recovered it. And it may be a touchdown. He's very close. Thompson. You see Braggs. Plotting. I don't know if he thought his team ended up with a football or not, but it's going to be first and goal inside the one. Well, look at 76 Noah outside and 71 Noah. You got Manley Canoa, number 76. Watch these big guys just wall everybody to the inside. Hey, you got big bodies like that in the tailback. Thompson does a good job. The ball is stripped. Is that France? You strip the ball and. Hey, a lucky bounce, backed off of Tia Thompson. Watch him here and strip the football. Franz right on it, pulls it loose, and Thompson just gets lucky and falls in it, on it for the score. Did not get a touchdown, and it looked like he fell right into the end zone with it. But not going to be the case. Well, that's a judgment call and a placement by the officials. You see where the football was marked? Recovered the it was football. marked at the end zone. <laughs> The ball was placed on the goal line, Gary. And which, to be honest, is where I thought it should have been. It should have been a touchdown. I think the official, he put the ball down. I don't know if he didn't realize. Well, now they go, wait a minute, we can't do that. Well, look at this. Here's the football, and watch his knee. His knee is over the end line when he catches the ball. I guess he's touching, touching it right before the end line, which is why they didn't give him the score. Doesn't matter. Thompson dives, got in. As they unpile, the officials on the side saw him go across the plane, and Hawaii has taken the lead. So Thompson officially is a one-yard dive, and he gets his second TD of the day. And for Afatia, that's his third of the year. Well, they just need to get a push, the big offensive line they do, and he goes over the top, and the defenders don't come over the top to stop him. Good one-yard plunge. And Hawaii will now go for the point after from Eric Hannum. His kick is good. And the Rainbow Warriors, after down 7-0, now lead it 14-7. We're back with more on Fox Sports Net. We have a standoff in progress at 211 Hazelwood. <laughs> Sir, drop the chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. Drop it. I said, drop the chalupa. Just put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Get your hands on the new chalupa. With a shell so crispy, flaky, chewy, tasty, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Just 99 cents, only at Taco Bell. Better get some backup. Roger. <laughs> The best-selling full-size luxury SUV in America is now the most powerful luxury SUV on the planet. So when we say Lincoln Navigator is the best way to take luxury anywhere, we mean anywhere. The ultimate power trip begins here at your California Lincoln dealer, Lincoln Navigator. Does a guitar with superior sound quality sound too expensive? Well, not at Norm's Rare Guitars, where you could find a $2,100 classic reissued 12-string for just $12.95. And then, for another sound investment, stop at Arco for their high-quality gas. Its new Cleantech additive will clean your engine and help bring out the best in your car's performance. And who doesn't like a great performance? Arco, official gasoline of the Pac-10. 7, the University of Hawaii, thanks to a couple of Tom Thompson touchdowns, and the Hurricane now will receive the kickoff down a touchdown, 14-7. Bill and Gary Reasons with you at Skelly Stadium on Fox Sports Net, and going back to take the kick will be John Mosley, the senior from Moore, Oklahoma, and Shrout lines up to kick it off. to 
250 pounds into it. Mosley. Nice return to the 25-yard line. And Tosa will operate there. You want to stay up on what's going on in high school athletics in the state of Texas? Check out High School Extra tomorrow at 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Net. Get an in-depth look at high school athletics and the star athletes of tomorrow. Doing it today in the high school ranks. Andy McElroy and the crew does a great job on that. Sundays, 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Net. First and 10 ball on the 24-yard line. Josh Blankenship in his first collegiate start. With a shotgun. Got some time, but it's tipped at the line, and a wide open Smith didn't get a shot at the football. As there's Ulbrich, we were told he'd be all over the field, and again, he's proving that. Jeff Ulbrich's a good quality running run linebacker, but I didn't know how well he'd do in the passing game. It was a good job of dropping back that time, getting his hand up and disrupting the throw from Josh Blankenship. <laughs> Second and 10 now for the Hurricane again out of the shotgun. Three wide outs to the top of your screen. He looks that way, in trouble. Smith fielded it. Now goes forward to pick up a few, but lost the football. Tulsa manages to come up with it, though, on the recovery. And Louis Fungo making the tackle. And almost a big play here for Hawaii on defense. Ball comes out and the screen play to the outside of the receiver Smith trying to make a big play out of a short gain and ball's knocked loose and Dave Rader almost <laughs> almost loses the football at his end of the football field, Bill. And look at Rocky Felker, I believe, there, the offensive coordinator. Taking things out. And Tulsa. Third and seven. snap nice handoff and Mosley made the best of a tough situation and a nice job by Blankenship to feel the snap and quickly get it to Mosley that could have been a disaster and Tulsa gonna have to punt it away but almost got the first down on that carry by Mosley yeah, a little change up little draw play inside Mosley very close to the first down it's about fourth and one Casey Lipson comes on to punt. Hoping to do better than that 23-yarder on the last one that ended up leading to a Hawaii touchdown. Hands on his own 19. Garland, the deep man. 25, dancing and Juken lost the ball and recovered at the 30. Football getting a little greasy here the last couple of possessions both ways. And Tuioti made the fumble recovery for his partner. Well, Garland's got the leading average for return in the conference, and he wants to make a big return trying to avoid some of the would-be tacklers until Yoti comes up with the fumble. After the play was over, personal foul on the kicking team, personal foul on the receiving team. Those penalties offset. First down. Take the helmets off, give them gloves, and let them go at it. <laughs> so it's a wash. And another look. And you see Garland just trying to make people miss, trying to find his blockers and set some things up here. And then it's actually knocked out by his own player until Yodi comes up with a fumble recovery. There's Matt Paul getting back, trying to set a block, and he actually bumps him on the, on the elbow when the ball pops loose. Garland on the sidelines now with Hawaii operating first and 10 from its own 30. Rainbows with a seven-point edge, 14-7. Robinson, plenty of time. Got a man and overthrew him. Going deep that time as he tried to get it to Ashley Lully. Well, that shows you the arm strength that Dan Robinson has. Is very comfortably in the pocket, sets back and throws to the outside to Laley, trying to get the ball from the big home run play. He was open. The ball just sailed. He does have the wind at his back and just a little bit too much, too much arm strength on that one. Talking about Hawaii's improvement, and they come in here averaging 24 points a game. But look at 98 there through six games, 49 points, 99, 144, and the total for 98 was 149. 
And they've already passed that with today's 14 points. They give him 158. Robinson finds his man in a first down at midfield. Harris with a reception as he goes into Tulsa territory. Shannon Harris of West L.A. Junior College. And Harris came in with 28 receptions. Nice one here. Well, Shannon Harris is in the slot. He's just going to work to the outside. And Dan Robinson, watch him read the field here. He's going to look to his right, right, right. Nobody's open there. And Shannon Harris just sits to the outside. Watch him all the way across the field. Nobody within 10 yards of him. Good job by Dan Robinson finding the open receiver, exploiting the defense. Yeah, and Robinson, a 25. The veteran been around and uh, never lost his cool in there. No good protection. Here, the little shovel and the hammer being applied. Tried to feed it, well, he did feed it to Thompson, and then Tulsa fed it right back to him. Jerry McClure leading the way, linebacker from Tahlequah, Oklahoma, 6'2", 234-pound senior. And McClure leads his defense from the linebacker position, does a good job here of sniffing out the little play here, trying to get the ball, a little misdirection, running it outside, trying to get it to Thompson, back on the little shovel pass inside, and McClure, who's probably got a bit man coverage in that situation, just right on top of him. 5.43, clock moving here in the second period is Hawaii. Now a second down and 12, leading 14 to seven. Ball on the 49 of the Rainbow Warriors. Robinson again takes the snap out of the shotgun and drops it off to Thompson. They close on him, but not before he makes a nice pickup. And it'll be third and around five now for Hawaii as McCoy made the tackle. That was a play for Hawaii where they tried to stretch the field. They had five receivers out in the pattern, two to the near side and two to the far side. And Thompson, who's the tailback out of the backfield, is his last option. And Dan Robinson read every receiver and goes to the open man, not trying to you know, throw a tough pass, but trying to find what the defense is going to give him. Third and seven, the ball on the 46. Tulsa fans encouraging again their team to come up with the effort here defensively. And Robinson to Thompson. Wrapped up, not brought down. Finally, the pursuit is there, and he is stopped at the 47-yard line, way short of the first down. And Farley, playing with that sprained knee and all, made the stop. Well, another conservative play here by Dan Robinson. He's just going to throw it back out to Thompson, but the cornerback, Todd Franz, does a good job staying at home in his own defense. Breaks down, makes contact, and waits for the cavalry to come. A lot of pursuit inside by Tulsa's defense. Good job on that series. Boy, Farley finishes them off. Those are plays you like, don't you? When you got two guys holding on to him, and then you come with a full steam. And Hawaii now to punt it away. And Shrout, a high kick. Bounce into the end zone. Hawaii almost down that one inside the five. But Tulsa will get the football back. First and 10 of the 20. Nice kick, just the same by Shrout. And we'll take a brief timeout. You're watching Fox Sports Net. Hawaii leads it 14 to 7. Fox Sports News Primetime, your Sunday night source for all the day's NFL action. But wait, there's more. From the playmakers. He's off to the races. Touchdown. To the game breakers and newsmakers. Want the latest? You've got it. Woo. Catch Keith, Kevin, NFL coaching great Marv Levy, and our all-pro team of analysts. Wow. We cover the NFL. You bet. Fox Sports News Primetime, Sunday night, every night. <laughs> You know, most men get pretty shook up about losing their hair. But today, many of them are learning about Bosley Medical. They use your own living hair to fill in the thin spots. Just look at that. It really works. You can treat it like real hair because it is real hair. Your own naturally growing hair. So you don't have to worry about it. Bosley Medical is the world's most experienced hair restoration practice. For over 25 years, they have performed more than 130,000 procedures using the innovative micrografting techniques pioneered by founder Dr. L. Lee Bosley. Each surgeon of Bosley Medical is board certified and individually trained by me. So if you want to have your own naturally growing hair back, call this number for more information. We'll send you this free video and in-depth guidebook that gives you the real facts about hair restoration. There's no cost and absolutely no obligation. So do it for yourself. Call now and get the real results you've been looking for. It's your real hair. You can't do better than real. Sharks King, Sunday at 6 on Fox Sports Net. 
Welcome back to Tulsa, Oklahoma and WAC football. Hawaii with a 14-7 lead, 4.33 to go here in the second period. Just beyond the stands there, you see the new Reynolds Center, the basketball home for the University of Tulsa that opened up at the beginning of last season after a few games in. And we're anticipating sellout crowds for Bill Self's team this year, and they're going to have a fine club. Tulsa trying to get it going offensively. The handoff to Savage on the end of round. And he may have the first down. Run out of bounds at the 30. 3-yard line. That's the case. He will have the first down for Tulsa. A little bit different look there to start the series. Well, Damon Savage, he's a guy they want to put the ball in his hands quite a bit. Go ahead and give it to him on reverse. Let him use his speed and try to make a play to the outside. Good blocking in front of him here. Good positive play for his offense to get started. Now it brings up second and short with Josh Blankenship behind at quarterback. And you know, a little bit different play calling when it's second and short instead of third and long. Time of possession, you wouldn't think the run-and-shoot offense would give you that. Well, Hawaii has run it quite a bit today, and as a result, they have the edge here with 420 and counting before halftime. Second and two on that run after they marked that ball back at the 28-yard line. Kempford making the tackle. Rice with a 28-14 lead over TCU and the Owls. Boy, that early season rugged schedule playing of Michigan and Texas and those folks paying off for Ken Hatfield's team. They put a thumping on Hawaii in Honolulu, and that's not easy. DJ Barnett in the backfield now for Hawaii with a Tulsa with it second down, third and one. Beg your pardon. Barnett. No, did not get it. So fourth down is Barnett, a freshman from Mogi, Oklahoma, is denied the first down. And you see Albert. Boy, look at those guns. He wraps you up. He wraps you up. Well, watching the inside here, Albert number 44 is going to scrape and do like a linebacker supposed to step into the hole and make contact. Watch him wrap up and drive through and make the tackle stop him short of the first down. Had a little help there from Yapid War number 22 on the outside. Tell you, he's kind of a prototypical linebacker. Not very tall, but good size, good speed, good range, and obviously a hitter. Yeah, they like to compare him to a Zach Thomas, who was a stud at Texas Tech and has become a very fine NFL player. They say he's just faster than him. And so far, you got to like what you see of him. Flips come with a punt, and why is he at the football back with 2.59 to go? And a 14-7 lead here in Tulsa. June Jones has been around, and he knew he wanted to come back to the islands as uh, the Hawaii coach who actually played at Hawaii as well as Oregon and Portland State and then coached under Dick Tomey at Hawaii. Houston Gamblers, he coached here against the Oklahoma Outlaws, the old USFL days and with Denver, Ottawa in the CFL, and then his NFL stay, head coach with the Falcons, was going to be the Chargers head coach, was offered the job and said, no, I'm going back to what he considers pretty much home, even though he came from Portland originally. Reception made and knocked out of bounds by Franz is Shannon Harris. He took the hit. Robinson delivered the pass. Well, he did make a good grab on the sideline, getting his feet down in bounds and took a pop going out. Plenty of time here to execute this offense. Dan Robinson can throw the ball downfield. If he throws it to the sideline, you'll see here the catch and the hit. Good job of concentrating and making the grab. 2.51. Play in the first half. Robinson steps underneath the center. 12 of 20 for 135 today. And here is Weaver. And he is weaving his way across the 45 to the Tulsa 44-yard line. Von Weaver, junior from Sacramento, California. This is the guy who's leading him in rushing coming in with 234 yards, but his first carry. A little bit of a change-up runner. He's got a little more side-to-side -side type of a movement. He's a watch Weaver running the football down the field. Good change of direction, going left, going right, and finding holes in the defense. A little spin move gets him a few more positive yards. Good, good change-up there, bringing Thompson in, getting him, get, taking him off. Bring Weaver in, putting Thompson on the sideline, getting a little different look for this defense. And Weaver picks up 19. His longest run of the year has been 20. And it's first and 10 Warriors, 43 of the Hurricane. All kinds of time with 2.24 to go. Robinson, all kinds of time to throw the football. Man well covered. And he throws it away that time as looking to the near sideline and Craig Stutzman. 
And Dan Robinson just couldn't find an open receiver. He thought he'd go to the sideline and maybe Stutzman could grab that ball, but the ball just sailed up high. June Jones. Seen his club this year, 105 rushing yards per game, three, one third of this game, 136 passing. And you look at the season where this team averages 74 rushing for the game and 333 passing, and you see the balance that is usually not a Hawaii requirement. Robinson coming back to get the football and a great run afterwards. Nicely done that time by Lelly. Ashley Lelly. And he's down to the 27-yard line before Chris Miller makes the stop. Well, just a wide receiver screen here to the outside. Robinson throws it outside. And watch Dustin Owen, number 74, flash through and make the block. You see the block there that springs him for the big play. Good job execution. A big lineman coming from the middle of the field outside and picking off the cornerback. And Hawaii trying to punch another one in before halftime. Two minutes to go, and they've got it first and 10 on the Tulsa 28-yard line. Shannon, the man in motion, back and forth behind Harris, and he hands off to Weaver. 25, 20, and Weaver rolling inside the 19-yard line. McCoy makes the tackle. I believe he'll be just shy of the first down marker. May depend on the spot. Let's listen in on the last play. Hopping away, but Weaver, a nice run. Second and one after the nine-yard pickup. Hawaii up 14-7. 111 to go in the half. One more. Robinson in trouble and goes down. And Robinson brought down on the sack that time as University of Tulsa Drew McLaughlin making the tackle. Good job getting the backfield by McLaughlin, but Robinson doesn't throw the ball away. He has plenty of time to throw the football. He should throw this ball to the outside right now on Tommy. One, two, three. And Robinson in the... Warriors now burn the second timeout. They've got one remaining with 47 seconds to go in this first half, and Hawaii leading 14-7. Boy, you want to see a fresh new show that folks are talking about in the NFL? Well, then check it out on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. NFL this morning with Chris Myers running that show and Marv Levy to the right side. Spielman on the left, and certainly... It's going to be fun tomorrow when Mike Shanahan joins him, the head coach of the Denver Broncos, the only the fifth coach in NFL history to have guided a team to back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles. He'll be aboard tomorrow on NFL this morning at 10 a.m. Sunday on Fox Sports Net. You know, Bill, we talked about a little while ago about the balance here for Hawaii running the football, helping that offense running the ball instead of throwing it all the time. Well, that's June Jones. I tell you, he says his experience from being around and all the different programs that he's had quarterback coach, coordinator, head coach, calling the plays here for the University of Hawaii. He's done a good job of play selection and obviously featuring the running game. Yeah, and one of the things you like about him, he has a plan for everything, whether it's the travel over here, which they stayed in L.A. on the way and they'll stay in L.A. on the way back, or, hey, he sees some things in this Tulsa team that he figures I've got to run the football and show you can run it and run it consistently out of the run and shoot. Well, one of the unique things is that Hawaii, they practice out there on the islands at about 7 a.m. local time. So the start of this ball game was very close to the practice time that they would have out there. So the change of time zones and the travel didn't affect them very much this week. Yeah, five-hour time difference. And uh, he said, that's something that, no, I'm no genius. We just kind of stumbled <laughs> into it. We started practicing early morning. And the more we did, the more we liked it. And he said, then we found out when we came over to the mainland that, hey, this is like playing at regular time for practice for us, and it has paid off for the victory against SMU. And not many road games for this team have nine home games. This year, only three on the road. Third down and five. Robinson delivers to the 10, five, and one official saying timeout, the other saying keep the clock moving. Clock stops at 41 seconds remaining as Braggs made the tackle that time. The receiver wide open, Ashley Lelly. Well, Braggs actually fell down in coverage. They're not covering the wide receivers here before the snap. They need to get their defense deployed. And now Robinson.
Robinson downs the football. 40 seconds to go. And Hawaii still has one timeout remaining. We talked about earlier in the game about the red zone production for this offense. Done a pretty good job of popping it in. And two times today already, Bill, they've run the football in the, in the end zone. This run and shoot offense, it tends to bog down in the red zone sometimes because they don't have the tight end to run it in. They bring an offensive lineman in to be a tight end sometimes, but here they're going with their four wide receiver set. Second down and goal from the four. Robinson, plenty of time, got a man incomplete, but a flag is thrown. Going again to Lelly. And looks like interference is going to be the call. Fran's going to be whistled for it. Pass interference on the defense. Ball be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Now it's first down, Gary. And even though there's only 35 seconds, it gives Hawaii a few more options since they still have that timeout remaining. Yeah, you can see here Robinson throwing the football, and Franz has just got, got his hand on the receiver a little bit before the ball gets there, so it's a, it's a penalty and a first down for, for Hawaii. And Weaver will run it in for the score, and Hawaii makes it a 20-7 to ball game. Flag is thrown, though. Hold everything. And you saw the yeah, signal from the Tulsa lineman saying it's on the Warriors. And nobody's coming off the field. Yeah, the line judge on the near side threw the flag, so it's usually either defensive offsides or a false start by the offense. And Jones looking on with Hawaii waiting to see the verdict. It is against Hawaii as Dave Rader. Only six men on the line of scrimmage. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. See the reaction from Coach Jones. Well, he knows that they're supposed to be lined up, but the referees counted it a different way and a little bit animated there. And he wants his offense to execute. So, 30 seconds to go, but it remains first down. Yards march back though, and the line of scrimmage is the seven. First and goal from the seven. Weaver alone back again. Robinson again, plenty of time. Gonna run? No. And it is complete inside the one yard line. And he got out of bounds with 23 seconds to go. Dan Robinson showed some elusiveness there. Hey, he checks the field all over the field, checks all four receivers. You see him throwing a ball and taking a pop from McClure on the outside. And watch the catch. Watch him drag his foot. Good job of catching the football and staying in bounds. Carter on the reception. Nice job by Carter. You can tell he's a well-schooled senior out of L.A., their leading receiver coming in. Now second and goal for the one, and Weaver, no signal yet. Did not slide in. And Hawaii calls a timeout with 14 seconds to go. What an end of the first half. <laughs> We've had penalties, reset a first down. Well, Weaver's trying to bob and weave here to get to the outside, but he runs into number 24, Brett Butler, and Butler just drives him back. Does a good job of stopping him short of the end zone. That was a great play by Butler to just deny him in. And 14 seconds to go. It is third down coming up. So Hawaii's obviously got the, if, if they run it, they're out of timeouts and they don't get in, they probably won't get the playoff. So almost, I mean, but look where they are at the football's place. Well, the half yard line. Or it is half yard line. It's just a decision that the coach has to make. June Jones has to decide whether he feels like his offensive line are going to get enough push for his running back to get into the end zone. Probably, I'd guess he'd throw the ball in this situation, have a chance to either run it or throw it, at least get the uh, field goal built. Let's take a look at what's ahead for these two teams. After today, Hawaii will go back home in that game on Fox Sports Net. TCU. 
going to Hawaii, and then at San Jose State, Fresno, Navy, and Washington State to close it out. So you see the magnitude of this game for Hawaii. They're going to win here, go three and one, then meet TCU before they go to San Jose. Now, on the other side, for the University of Tulsa, trying to break a five-game losing streak here today, home again next week against Fresno, and then on the road at UTEP before they finish up with Northeast Louisiana and then SMU. Interesting call here for June Jones and his offense where they're going to go for it, running the football on fourth, uh, excuse me, on third one. As Tulsa's calling timeout now, getting their defense set. All right, as they uh, reset here, we want to remind you of what's to follow our telecast today on Fox Sports Net. We go to the Big 12 Conference in Norman, Oklahoma, with Texas A&M rolling in to take on the high-passing Oklahoma Sooners. And that's coming up following this game as Ron Thulin and Artie Gigantino will be in Norman to bring you all the action. A&M and Oklahoma Big 12 play. Well, that's a key game for both teams there. It was Oklahoma trying to see if they're a contender or pretender for the Big 12 South, where things are wide open this year. Dave Rader meets with his defense. Also in the whack today, Rice putting it on TCU 35-14. And don't you know they're grinding it out down in Houston now with Hatfield's spread option offense. Big win appears headed for the Rice Owls as they'll remain unbeaten in the whack at 4-0 if they can hang on. Here, Hawaii trying to punch it in to go up by two scores before the half. 14 seconds to go. Third down and goal from the one. Robinson throws it, completes a touchdown. And Hawaii finds their man, Dwight Carter, his fifth TD reception of the year. And the Warriors take a while, but they get the score. Well, the quarterback does what he's supposed to. You read his keys, watch him look to the right, checks two receivers, one, two, not there. Comes back to Carter, who's coming all the way across the field, finds him in the middle of the end zone. Good job, good execution by Hawaii. And the point after from Hannum is good. And it's now 21 to 7. And Robinson's one yard TD pass to Carter brings this reaction from June Jones. That, that's what they're supposed okay. to do. Huh? Yeah. They're supposed to do that, Bill. So, yeah, okay. Should have happened about deal. 30 minutes ago if we had screwed around down here. <laughs> Just the same, the result he proved, he'd rather have, though. We score a touchdown. They only have 10 seconds left to work with on the clock. Well, that's a plus here. You know, Hawaii coming in, getting the 21 points here in the first half. Their offense seems to be executing and running the ball very well. Both we've seen Weaver and Thompson doing a good job from the tailback position, and Dan Robinson showing why he's a leader in his conference throwing the football. He's done a good job of spreading it around. His 12th That's touchdown good. pass of the year to Carter, and after two TDs on the ground from Apatia Thompson, they go to the air this time, and the Rainbow Warriors with a 21-7 lead. They've had four possessions in this quarter, two touchdowns. Tulsa's had three possessions and three and out in this quarter. Tulsa, no first downs, Hawaii nine. It has been a bummer for the Hurricane. The kick goes into the end zone and out, and Tulsa will have it with 10 seconds to go, first and 10 from the 20-yard line. That's been a similar story for Tulsa and Dave Rader and his offense. They've done very, very well on the first drive. We've talked about the first last four ball games have scored on the first drive and really haven't had any offense to speak of you know beyond that bill and they'll probably have a chance to go into the huddle into the into the locker room here at halftime looks like they're going to drop on the on the field there and kill the clock and go in and reassess what they're doing offensively and trying to try to find a way to do something against hawaii well tulsa in the year 51 40 they have been outscored in the first quarter coming in here by opponents in the second quarter prior to today, they've been outscored 66 to 16. Unfortunately for Tulsa, that trend continues for Young Blankenship and the Hurricane. We're back with halftime activities. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net. It's Hawaii by 14. 
You know, it's great to get out of town. Kane 7, halftime of Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Land, along with Gary Reasons. This is the WAC game here in Tulsa. A couple weeks ago when we were here, we were talking about what's going to happen to the WAC. Well, if you haven't been following, the shuffle has continued. TCU has moved on, Gary, or will move on soon to Conference USA. Let's take a look at the WAC expansion. Now, next year, Nevada, already voted in, will be coming in officially. And then 2001, as TCU exits, Boise State and Louisiana Tech will become members of the league. Well, that's what the new news is. Boise State and Louisiana Tech both going to come into this football league in 2001. And both of them bring a couple different things to the table. Boise State, obviously, has the humanitarian bowl, potentially, that one of the WAC teams would go to at that at the, when that comes to be. And Louisiana Tech surrounds, now they surround the Independence Bowl. So hopefully maybe a, Carl Benson and the WAC group may get a bid there as well. Yeah, and San Jose State has certainly been instrumental in helping in the San Jose area to start the uh, Silicon Valley Bowl will be coming up. So things don't look as bad or as grim for some of the WAC folks as they'd originally thought. Well, a lot of opportunities postseason now for the WAC teams, and they're all trying to position themselves to get to where they can go to a bowl game. And all of those things we talked about, Bill, are, are things that these programs all strive for. Yeah, and certainly uh, today, Rice is headed that direction. Let's take a look at some of the college football scores from the Western Athletic Conference. And Rice in the fourth quarter, leading in Houston today as their matchup with TCU and the Owls coming into that game with a record of 3-0. Now 35-21 Rice over the Horn Frogs. Fresno State in UTEP in the first period in Fresno. And Fresno with a 7-0 lead over the Miners. And then later on tonight, SMU is on the road to take on San Jose State. The current standings, and boy, Rice really gets a big hold on the lead if they can uh, hold on today. Well, Rice is going to be in the driver's seat. The schedule plays in their favor. They're playing very, very well right now. Ken Hatfield has got his bunch running the football that spread option attack. And up in TCU in town, they're doing very well against the Horned Frogs. And, of course, Hawaii sitting there wanting that win today to at least get sole possession of second place. Stay with us. We'll be back with more halftime activities from here in Tulsa. It's Hawaii. 21 I'm calling about the used car you have for sale. Yeah? How many miles does it have? Well, you know, it's got a few miles, but they're just highway miles. Why take chances buying a used car? A certified used vehicle from your Toyota dealer goes through a 128-point inspection and carries a six-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. You even get 24-hour roadside assistance for a full year. Was the car ever in an accident? Uh, define accident. So see your Toyota dealer, where the best new cars make the best used cars. We have a standoff in progress at 211 Hazelwood. Sir, drop the chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. Drop it. I said, drop the chalupa. Put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Get your hands on the new Chalupa. With a shell so crispy, flaky, chewy, tasty, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Just 99 cents, only at Taco Bell. Better get some backup. Roger. <laughs> Do you ever just have one of those days? Well, at Farmers Insurance, everything we do is about getting things back to normal. Isn't that what insurance is supposed to do? Farmers, get you back where you belong. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. You got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with Bowflex. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41 and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Superstar Shortstops, Sunday at 9 on Fox Sports Net. The sound of the Hawaii 
with a 21-7 halftime lead over the University of Tulsa. Welcome back to Skelly Stadium on a beautiful day for college football. Homecoming here for the Golden Hurricane, but it had been pleasant for the alums as Tulsa on the short side, 21-7. And Hawaii showing us a little bit more of a running game than we might have anticipated. Well, they ran the ball pretty well today, but I tell you, Tulsa started out like they were going to try to win this football game. Their first drive resulted in a score, Bill. And that's what it's been like for the last four weeks for Tulsa, and they did a pretty good job starting out. Let's take a look at some of the highlights and the hurricane going on the ground with mostly to get in for the opening score of the day. Well, they look very well starting out. Good balance, throwing the ball short and mostly getting the score. And then right away, Hawaii answers with a short drive of their own that started at the 50-yard line, and they used the ground and Thompson. Well, four wide receiver offense, a run and shoot, not known for running, but Afatia Thompson does a good job of getting it in the end zone. 7-7, we go to the second quarter, and 8.39 to go, Thompson again for the dive. Same story, trying to run the ball in when they get in close, and they're doing a good job. That offensive line is big for Hawaii. And then seemingly an endless amount of plays, but finally with 10 seconds to go, another TV. A good job by Dan Robinson finding Carter in the back of the end zone. Good poise quarterback. as He's showing you why he leads the whack in passing. Certainly going to be a tough one for Tulsa to come back from. What's Dave Rader tell his bunch right now? Well, I think Dave Rader says, hey, let's throw out the first half. We've got to get out there on the field and start executing offensively, getting some positive plays, grind out a few first downs. Too many three and outs like they had in the second quarter. Can't bode well for his football team. They've got to find a way to drive the football down the field. For hopefully have that happen to them early in the third quarter. You know, you got to be impressed with Hawaii, too, because a lot of people talk about traveling to the islands to play. But what about when they got to come here? I mean, they left Thursday after practice stayed in L.A. and then here last night worked out at high school uh, and they've come out and show no worse for the win. A lot of planning goes into these trips, long trips. They come all the way across from the islands. They stayed in L.A. last, actually on Thursday. They stayed here in Tulsa on Friday night. Got up early for the football game. I talked about them being, their practice time is 7 a.m. out in Oahu where they practice and here it's kind of the same. The game time at 3 p.m. today was more of what they'd be used to practicing at, so not too much of a change for them. They've executed very well for June Jones. So far, so good for the rain Warriors second half coming up. It's 21-7 Hawaii leading. We'll be right back on Fox Sports Net. This is our art. We sculpt in metal, paint in G-forces. You won't find our work in museums for we are artists of the streets. Our art places form in harmony with function, moves body and soul. Cars are our passion. Engineering is our art. Acura. Fortune 500 companies know that when it comes to renting a car, National Car Rental gets you in your car and on the road fast. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. National Car Rental. Let's go. By Factory Direct, the jewelry exchange in Tustin has expanded and now has the largest factory showroom in the U.S. We guarantee our jewelry to be the lowest price. Compare Tiffany's one carat invisible bands for over $5,000 with the jewelry exchange's GVS quality for $1,600. One carat pendants are $249, two carat tennis bracelets $349, and one carat studs $399. We carry thousands of rings, bracelets, and pendants. We guarantee all our jewelry to appraise for at least double. The jewelry exchange in Tustin. Girl, love this. Our target is men. What's a target? Enjoying the halftime activities and homecoming today. The heck with the score, those young Tulsa say. 21 7, Hawaii over Tulsa. As the Hurricane comes back on to start the second half, Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you on Fox Sports Net. Take a look at some of the numbers here in the first half. 
and it's been an all Hawaii show, but first the possessions kind of indicate that. There's Hawaii's possessions, and we're just kind of throwing you everything at once, and then we'll decide which order. Okay, how about halftime stats? There we go, with the first downs, Hawaii, and the rushing yards, certainly the big figure. Well, a complete dominance by Hawaii. Look at the first downs, 15, and look at the rushing yardage here, 107 yards, and you can run the football with this run-and-shoot offense. I tell you, that bodes well for that June Jones team, and Tulsa really has not got anything going, only four first downs on the day, and now the time of possession looks to be in the favor of Hawaii as well. 17 minutes. Dave Raider needs to find a way to move his offense down the field. Boy, it has uh, been a rough second quarter again for the Golden Hurricane. And we'll show you that now with the possessions. Here's Hawaii with the two punts, then the touchdown, punt come back with another TD, and finally they won that happened with 10 seconds to go. And on the other side for the University of Tulsa, as has been their form, touchdown to start the game, and then look at the number of plays, Gary. Nothing even to talk about. Well, too many three and outs. You see these situations here. One, two, three in the second quarter, and then the one here in the first quarter. Four series, three downs and out. They're having to go, you know, too many plays out there on defense to try to stop this Hawaii offense. Your offense needs to execute, get some first downs, move the ball down the field. You realize you're not going to score every time you're out there, but your offense has to execute and find a way to stay out there and give your defense a chance to regroup. Hawaii is coming off a, a week off following a loss, 38-19 to Rice. And, boy, that team seems to really have reacted well to it. On the other side, Dave Rader trying to pull it together for the Hurricane to see if they can come back here in the second half against Hawaii. And Tulsa will get the football to start the second half as June Jones strolls the other sideline. Head coach of the Falcons from 94 to 96 in the NFL. And they got to the playoffs in 95. And then after a year out of football, he came back to San Diego last year. And when Gilbride was let go, became the interim head coach and then offered the job on a full-time basis and decided going to go back to the University of Hawaii where he's been a dream come true for him. Mosley, 20, skips to the sideline, 30. Cuts it back across to the 37, 38-yard line. Nice return that time for Mosley on the kickoff. Shaking his right shoulder there. Maybe he hurt his arm on that kickoff return going out of bounds. Mosley, obviously, they're, they're starting tailback, and they don't really want him out of the football game if, if they can avoid it, Bill. No, Mosley, kind of an all-purpose guy. Uh, kick returns, he's been averaging 14 and a half on kickoff returns. And Scholes, who is the other guy that has returned many of them, is uh, banged up as well. So it's that time of the year. Tulsa on Monday had 20 players unable to practice following the TCU loss. And they've gotten most of them back, but certainly not at 100%. Blankenship, plenty of time. Going deep. Got him, man! Complete! Oh, my goodness! What a play! with the reception, and Tulsa moves it now. And that wakes up this crowd. Damon Savage, a senior out of Holland Hall here in Tulsa. Well, he's been their biggest play wide receiver all season long, and Josh Blankenship shows that he has the ability to throw the deep ball. Savage just does a good job of outrunning the defenders on the outside and watch him reach out here. Actually dive to catch his football. Good execution, good concentration. That's a big-time catch, Bill. 47 yards, longest reception of the year for Savage as he came in leading him with 38 grabs and 359. And Tulsa first and 10 on the 21. And the flags go as they try to hand off to D.J. Barnett. Well, talk on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Let's Remain. remember First here. Down. Been a while. The Tulsa keys to victory. And this penalty will set them back a few. Well, the offensive line, they protected the quarterback well enough today. The quarterback has thrown it away. But Mosley at tailback hasn't run a lot, hasn't got a lot of production there. And look at the average per play, 3.3 yards per play. They need to improve that. And Dave Rader knows that very well. His offense is sputtering. You got the big start here, but then the penalty, and now it is first and 15 at the 26 of the Rainbow Warriors. Gerald Smith, the quarterback now, and Smith steps forward. Smith, a senior out of Webster, Texas. Brought down by Matt Paul.
Well, I didn't see what happened to Blankenship and why he's not in the game. Gerald Smith is actually their third string quarterback. I guess they lined Blankenship up out of the pocket and kind of a misdirection play there on the, by the offense, trying to fool the Hawaii defense. Not a good game. Smith has done some quarterbacking for Tulsa. In fact, ran the wishbone, I believe, when Tulsa got banged up in Vegas a year or so ago. Well, here's a completion from Blankenship down to the 10 and inside to the seven yard line. To who? Gerald Smith. They were just sorting it out. And Smith with a reception is he had 19 coming in. Well, the offense calls this a smash route. It's underneath the linebackers all the way across the field, and the defense has cleared out. All the receivers have run off, and Gerald Smith catches it with nobody within about 15 or 20 yards from him. He's just trying to get to the outside and make as big a play as he can. That's a good job of ex executing an offensive play. Third reception of the day for Gerald Smith. First and goal to go for Tulsa at the seventh. Trying to run it, and not much room against that Hawaii front. Mosley carrying the football. You're good to see Mosley back in the game for the Hurricane. Doug Sims made the tackle. Junior from Berkeley, California. Nate Jackson from Oahu, 5'10", 154, stopping on the play. And we know what Hawaii's done in the red zone. This is what Tulsa has done so far this season. Out of 21 opportunities, 12 touchdowns, and six field goals. That's pretty good execution, 83 or so percent. Blanket chip. The toss and Barnett back to the line of scrimmage. So now Tulsa third down. And yeah, you'd take the field goal, I guess, Gary, just something positive coming out of the locker room. But boy, they'd sure like that touchdown. Well, they would like the touchdown, but I, obviously I think Dave Rader and his football team may need to score. They need to show their defense that they can move the ball down the field. And hey, it's not a one-man show out here. You guys aren't doing everything. We have to execute. Yusua made the stop that time on Barnett out of the backfield. Third down and goal. Blankenship looks. Going to call a timeout. Yeah, Josh had a look there that he wasn't aware of and didn't know what to do in that situation, so smartly called the timeout. We'll take one as well. Why up 14. Look forward. No problem. Cut that a little close. Sorry. Trash can, trash can. This year, Easy. over 4 million learner's permits Easy. will be issued. So you'll be glad to know the Lexus ES300 just received the highest possible rating for front side impact protection. Hey, son, how'd you do? Dad, can I drive? Starting at 31.9, it's a small price to pay. See your Southern California Lexus dealer. If you want quality, value, and convenience, all rolled into one neat carry-on bag, take a trip to Savinar's, where you just might find a $375 ballistic nylon roller for around $175. And then take a trip to Arco for great gas, great prices, and convenience all rolled into one. With PayQuick, you can pay with cash right at the island. And get moving, because don't you have a flight to catch or something? Arco, official gasoline of the Pac-10. Fox Sports News Primetime, your Sunday night source for all the day's NFL action. But wait, there's more. From the playmakers. He's off to the races. Touchdown. To the game breakers and newsmakers. Want the latest? You've got it. Woo. Catch Keith, Kevin, NFL coaching great Marv Levy, and our all-pro team of analysts. Wow. We cover the NFL. You bet. Fox Sports News Primetime, Sunday night, every night. Tulsa trying to get on the board again here to start the third quarter as Michael Wall, who went down with an ACL in his knee injury last week at TCU and out for the season, looking on today as his teammates down 21-7 at the half and an opening drive here in the second. It's third down and goal from the seven. Blankenship. Complete touchdown. Touchdown, Hurricane. Donald Schultz. His first TD of the year. Bill, it's the first time today that Tulsa has gone with a five-wide receiver set, and Scholes is in the slot out here. He just goes to the outside, or inside, rather, and good delivery that time by the quarterback, Blankenship, inside to Scholes for the touchdown. And Tulsa keying that 47-yard bomb to Savage. Gets the seven-yard TD pass to Scholes, 
And on for the point after is Chris Ernest as Tulsa tries to make it 21 to 14. Flag is thrown. The kick is good, but wait just a moment. And I believe it's going to be on Hawaii. She has sorted out. That's what I like conduct on the defense. Coming to climb. That's the point is good. So, Shoals gets the TD. Tulsa the extra point. 21-14. Hi, I'm Steve Bustjager, and I'm here today with my Star Chrysler Jeep baseball team. We and I'm here to tell you about a home run deal. $2.79 per month for a new 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. Incredible, a four-wheel drive limited. That's right, only $2.79 per month for our ultimate sport utility. Call 1-800-NEW-RIDE. You can't get more Jeep for your money. And Steve Sensen, Star Chrysler Jeep in Glendale, close to home. If you're ready to lose weight, muscle up, and get back into shape, I've got a free video you're going to love. Introducing a winning fitness strategy. you got to eat healthy, drink plenty of water, and most importantly, strength train with both legs. Strength training adds muscle. Not only does your shape look better, you actually increase your metabolism, so you end up burning more calories. Strength training these days isn't just for men. It's great for women, too. And Bowflex is designed for both. It's even been called the best home gym by Fitness Magazine. Use as little as 5 pounds to more than 400 pounds of resistance. Follow our six-week fast fat loss program or create your own from over 60 different health club quality exercises. Bowflex is easy to own and it fits in any room in your house. It comes with a six-week guarantee on results and you can finance it with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Hey, I'm 41 and I'm in the best shape of my life. And I can tell you, Bowflex really does work. For a free video and brochure on the machine that can help you get into great shape at any age, call right now. Superstar Shortstops, Sunday at 9 on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to the University of Tulsa campus. On just a great day for college football. Temperature high today in the mid-60s. Bill Land, Gary Reasons with you at Skelly Stadium where the shadows set in a bit as Tulsa, opening drive of the third quarter. Successful with a TD pass from Blankenship to Scholes of seven yards. And the Hurricanes close within a touchdown. And the kickoff now as Garland is the deep man. He takes it at the three for Hawaii. Five to the ten. Twenty. Bounds, but a nice return that time by Garland and Hawaii will get their first possession here with 11.47 to go in the third period. Well, I think importantly, though, for Tulsa coming out, starting the third quarter very positively, Bill, with a good drive, the big play to Savage, and obviously Dave Raider's offense has you know, put some points on the football on the board here. They're still in this football game, only down a score now, a touchdown. Well, and certainly, uh, we talk about halftime adjustments. Something occurred there where they went deep to Savage on a play we had not seen, and they get 47 yards to help set up the score. Now Hawaii with Robinson out of the shotgun. Got his man Carter, who got the last touchdown for Hawaii moments before the end of the first half. And that's a first down as the ball moved out to the 43-yard line. Remember those Hawaii keys? Well, let's go back and see how they've performed today after the tackle there by Franz on Carter. Well, Robinson, you see his numbers on the day. Very productive for that team. And special teams, you can see what they've done. Punting the football, they're average. They lead the conference in average for a punt. And quick start. Tulsa got out early, but, but Hawaii brought it to them late in the second quarter, Bill. Right now, 21-14, but first and 10 at the 42. Weaver. Who paid for trying to get the extra yard there as he turned every which way and brought down by a host of tacklers. Franz in on that bunch again, and boy, this guy has really had a, a fine season in what's been a tough year for Tulsa. Todd Franz, a senior from Weatherford, Oklahoma, leads him in interceptions. Also, 28 tackles coming in. 33 pass deflections in his career, always around the football. And a final from Houston. Rice goes to 4-0 in the whack with a 42-21 win over the TCU Horned Frogs. 
And Fresno in the second, leading the Miners of UTEP 7-0. Bulldogs up there. Robinson, plenty of time. Underthrown, intended for Lelly. I don't know if that ball got away from Robinson. Didn't have a lot of zip on it. It was a good five yards short from Lelly. Might have been tipped in the backfield. Really couldn't tell, but it didn't have a lot of mustard out of his hand. That would be a hard ball to catch because the sun is actually going right there. Dan Robinson will be throwing it right into the, where the receiver will be looking back into the sun. It's setting down over the end of the end zone, that end of the field, Bill. And these receivers, as they come back for the football, they're going to have to deal with it. Big third down, third and nine. Tulsa crowd trying to make some noise. Robinson steps up, got to keep the football. And he's close to the first down, but going to be short. Looks like the spot just the Tulsa side of the 50 where Andy Taylor closed to make the tackle. Well, credit good coverage that time by the secondary for Tulsa. Dan Robinson pulled it down. Little seam there in the middle, decided to take it down and run with it. Got a good game, but came up about a half yard short. So Tulsa's defense, not only did they start well offensively, big stop here for their first series on defense. Yeah, Hawaii does get a break with that game to where they can pin Tulsa a little bit, but the punt going into the win for Shroud. And deep is Braggs, Spencer Braggs, senior from Lawton, Oklahoma. Shroud's kick, not real high. Braggs fair catches it on the 11, and that's where Tulsa will get the football. Well, tomorrow, we got the way to start your day as you gear up for another day of action from the National Football League. It's the NFL this morning at 10 a.m. Spielman, Slater, Myers, and Levy will lead the way, and special guest Mike Shanahan, the head coach of the Denver Broncos, after a dismal start, Shanahan and the Broncos turning it around, look to make it three in a row when they face the Patriots on Sunday. Check them out, NFL this morning, 10 a.m. Sunday on Fox Sports Net. Josh Blankenship, after the TD pass on the last possession, this time, the bunch will start from the 12-yard line. Blankenship hit four of eight for 75 yards. For the snap, illegal substitution on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. So Tulsa will take the five here. And June Jones looks on for his explanation. And the University of Tulsa that has always run out of the no huddle since I believe around the 92 season, Gary, is operating with a huddle here in the second half as well. Well, they're going to do that with a young quarterback out there. Get in the huddle, make sure they've got the right play called, get the system going, and instead of trying to force him to make the plays at the line of scrimmage. Like a chip. Completes it. Coming back to get the football was the TD receiver, Donald Scholes. And not much on that game, though, as Yafet Warren makes the tackle. Warren, a senior from Seattle, Washington. Well, they had one successful drive to start the quarter. They want to do that again here. They're backed up a little bit, though. Brings up second and five, Bill. And that's a good situation to call a lot of different plays. They can run the ball, throw the ball at second and five. It's a good situation for the offensive coordinator. Blankets at five of five here in the second half for 75 yards. He sets up in the shotgun here. Got some time. Got a man. A little bit high, though, and goes off the hands that time of the receiver, Gerald Smith. And now Tulsa sitting there with that first and five. Now at third and five. Yeah, a little touch pass that time. He's threw a little bit too hot for, for Gerald Smith coming across the field to handle. That's one of the things he'll learn to do a little bit better as time goes on. He has to get some experience on the field. We talked about him playing in five of the first six games Blankenship has. And he's got a little bit of experience out there, but this is his first start and his first chance to really go the whole ball game. Third and five. Flag is thrown, and Blankenship throws it away. Saying they were drawn off. That's either one of the guards or the center move there, and the defense jumped into the neutral zone. Let's see how the officials call it. Yeah, looks like they're going to call it against the offense, I believe. Yeah. Well, you're talking about uh, actually maybe against the defense. 
offside on the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. It is a first down. Well, you're also talking about Blankenship and, uh, of course, uh, Josh playing uh, for his father last year in high school. And as we take another look at the offsides, and a little hard count there brings the defensive tackle into the neutral zone. It's big Doug Sims. Josh's father, Bill Blankenship, has led Union to a, another great season so far this year. Of course, he played quarterback here at Tulsa, and he and Coach Raider very close, won a very similar offense, so there has been some period of adjustment from that standpoint. He knew what he was getting into. Here's the long throw, and incomplete as Savage got knocked off in the line of scrimmage, never really got going. Yeah, but playing for a for a father who's a head football coach, you know, you're around football all the time, and that's what Josh Blankenship has. He has the pedigree. He know he has the knowledge. His his father played quarterback here at the University of Tulsa, and you know it's kind of a tradition for him to come here. And when he came to this campus, he told Dave Rader, he said, "Coach, I'm ready to play." And obviously, he has a has a lot of respect for his ability, so he's got him out there. He's just a true freshman. Normally, you try to redshirt a young man like this, but with the talent that he possesses, he wants to get him on the football field. And now it's a good thing they were playing him some before Wall got hurt. The handoff. Nice little lead block there, and Mosley picks up a few out to the 28-yard line, and Mosley will make it a third, and see where they set it here as Warren made the tackle on Mosley. Well, this is an interesting little draw here. You see the left guard, left tackle. They fake inside, then they come across, and Mosley gets in behind them on the outside. Looks like the play might start inside, but the blockers come across, and good job of execution by Tulsa. Third and three for the Hurricane. And it's not about big plays, but if they want to keep some momentum that they got with that opening touchdown of this quarter, they need to keep the football here. Man of motion is Lacrone. Blankenship goes to it. Lacrone got the first down, it would appear, as he dives across the 32-yard line. And Lacrone with a reception from Blankenship and Tulsa will keep the football. Well, you need third and short to go with a safe play here, and that's what he does. He's just a little screen, wide receiver screen outside. Comes in motion, gets behind the line. He's got two blockers in front of him. Does a good job here running through the tackle and getting the first down. Tulsa down 21-14, 7.58 remaining, 56 rather, here in the third period. And Blankenship hands it off to Mosley. Mosley finds a little crease, bounces to the outside, and there's a flag, which would lead you to believe a late hit or maybe a face mask. Mosley may be showing that. Let's see what the call is. LeJay made the stop and pushed him out. Well, good blocking at the point of attack by Aaron Haddock, the left guard. And Don Douglas, the left tackle, and Pete Muther really turned the corner. The tight end had the corner, so the block came outside, the running back came outside. You know, as much as people get upset with referees huddling in football, let's take another look at this one. Yeah, look at the end of the play here and watch Mosley. You can see, got a hand on the face mask. LeJay. Yeah, that's Quincy LeJay. And, and a first down for Tulsa on the penalty. To say as much as people get upset with the refs huddling in football, they'd like to see those guys in the World Series, those umpires huddle a little bit, wouldn't they, after some of the calls we've seen this year in the baseball playoffs? There's the first downs this quarter after just four in the first half. And all of those, I believe, are on their opening drive. Blanket chip on first and ten. Got a man incomplete. Trying to find Savage. And it'll be second down now for Tulsa with 7.48 to go in the third. Well, and Savage was wide open. He was five yards away from any defender. Josh Blankenship has led him too far. He waited for the receivers. He had a good combination around here with one receiver going inside and Damon Savage breaking to the outside and just could not deliver the ball on timing. Savage, an all-whack performer as a sophomore, injured and missed some last year. You see what he's done career-wise. Howard Twilley at that top of that list, our halftime guest, and Savage behind Bitson, whose career was halted by a horrible car accident, or he'd be in the NFL. Interception, Obrick, Hawaii bringing it back. Obrick, the 25, knocked out of bounds, and Hawaii comes up with a big defensive play. And now a penalty back at the 40-yard line as Blankenship was trying to get up. A Hawaii player was over him, and they got into it. And a flag was thrown, and you're going to have a personal foul there one way or the other. 
No, they're trying but that to will have no effect on the interception. No, not at all. Actually, Olbert, the linebacker, middle linebacker, you can see here, Josh Blanker throws the football a little bit behind the receiver. Savage wasn't going to get out there to him, and Albert just dropped back in zone coverage. Does a good job of picking it off. And watch him with the speed he has here. We talked about him running about a 4'6", 4'7", 40, and does a good job getting it down the sideline. He can motor. 6'248", and the penalty is against Hawaii. And that was a skirmish. And I don't know who the Hawaii player was. Blankenship was the Tulsa player trying to get up after the play had been whistled. And well, Bill, from early in his ball game, there's been a little bit of push that going yeah. on between between plays and after plays. And you know, these officials are just going to try to keep that in check. They don't want to let it get out of hand. So Hawaii is going to get the football. First and 10 from the 33 of Tulsa. Still great field position. And most importantly, stop the hurricane drive. Carter comes back. Got one blocker. Tulsa pursuing well, though, and Carter's brought down by a host of Tulsa tackles. Who was that big lineman that was way out there? He was trying to dance by. Well, Bill, when I, wall. Yeah, when I see this play first develop, watch the center here, number 74, get out front. He does a good job of, of doing that for him. Yeah, Owen doing a good job getting out front. But Carter, he can't find a way to get through there because... The defense for Tulsa does a good job coming from the inside out. Hey, the pursuit is there. That's good job, good gang tackling. Andy Phillips, pardon me, was also out there. 68 was the big fella. Now the Tulsa player down. Check and see here. 7.15 to go in the third period. Hawaii with a 21-14 lead, and Ulbrich the big interception. And following... This injury, Mallory, I believe, is the down player, Mark Mallory. Stay with us on Fox Sports Net. More college football. Two more games today. Tonight, AM and Oklahoma. The Aggies of Texas AM, ranked number 13, rolling the Norman to take on the high flying Sooners. And then later on tonight, we move to the Pac 10 in Tucson, where the Arizona Wildcats will host the Oregon Ducks at 9 15. All on your place for college football, Fox Sports Net. Mallory slow to get up. And he'll be helped off by the Tulsa training staff. Fans give him a hand. Mark, a freshman from Sand Springs, came in with 19 tackles this season. Second down and five, the ball on the 28-yard line. Robinson out of the shadows into the sun, and that might have cost the reception there by Lilly. I believe it did, Bill. That was right in that area we talked about earlier. The sun is right in the receiver's face, and the quarterback delivered it right in his hands, and maybe he didn't see the football. And the sun is setting right over the edge of the football stands right there on, on that side of the field. And that'll make it now third down and five. Third and five, 7.02 to go in the third period. Robinson out of the shotgun, the wide out three to the top, one to the bottom of your screen. Robinson bumped into his own man, then sprints out. And incomplete. Thrown hard to the receiver, Lelly. Tell you what, emotions are picking up on both sides of the football now as June Jones looks on, and the pressure was put on by Jeff Hewitt, who was chasing Robinson out of the pocket that time. Well, Dan Robinson shows that he's able to get out of the pocket, not known as a runner, but in this offense, he has to do a little half roll every time he throws the football, but sometimes the protection breaks down, and Dan Robinson tried to make a big play on third down. Well, and this would be a 45-yard field goal. Eric Hannum's hit a 50-yarder. They say, hey, heck with it. They're going to go for it here on fourth down and five. The ball at the 28. Robinson. Incomplete. Intended that time for Stutzman. And in 
into the ground it goes. Franz was covering, and the hurricane is held, and their fans react on a homecoming Saturday. Well, Stutzman ran a good route, gets down there past the first down marker, and does a little turn and stop and come back, and Dan Robinson just let the ball sail right into the ground about a three or four yards short of the receiver. I want to remind our viewers, coming up Texas A&M and Oklahoma at 6, and viewers in Texas and Oklahoma will be leaving us shortly to see that Big 12 matchup at the top of the hour. Those of you in Tulsa and the Oklahoma City areas who'd like to see the conclusion of this game will need to change channels to the following locations. And we'll show that again for you a little bit later as we get closer to 6. A&M and Oklahoma on Fox Sports Net. The penalties have picked up here, Bill. Well, they have. Penalty, no penalty on the play. Time. First half, the two teams took Hawaii had four, and Tulsa had five penalties. In the second half, becoming a factor. Well, Dave Raider's got to feel good about one thing, Gary. He survived the interception from Blankenship when they had some momentum and they were driving. And Back in decent field position and still with one touchdown game. Yeah, two series now. His defense has come up big. They've decided they're going to play a little bit against this Hawaii bunch, stopping them on offense, and now the offense has a chance to go out there and, and make up for the miscue. NBA fans, the season is approaching, and for those of you in the Houston market, the Rockets bring a, certainly a different look without Scottie Pippen. But Sir Charles and Akeem and the fellas back. The Rockets and the Pistons Sunday at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net as Detroit takes on the Houston Rockets. Again, the officials still conferring. I don't know what the discussion is about here. I guess just a timeout as they take care of business. It's going to be first and 10 for Tulsa at the 28-yard line. Hurricane 1 and 5 after the victory over Southwest Missouri, 45-21 in the opener. They lost at Oklahoma State, at AM, at San Jose State before falling here to Rice and then at TCU last week. Tulsa, 73-25 in the yardage battle this half as Coach Jones shielding the sun, looking on. First and 10 at the 28. Blankenship fakes the play action, out brings it out and complete. And out to the 30. We'll see where they're going to mark the football as Muther makes the reception and Warren makes the tackle. A little heavy block on the outside. Pete Muther is a tight end on the right side. And play action here by Blankenship. Watch him fake the left side. You're going to see Muther here. He's going to block and then come out for the pass on the outside. Does a good job of releasing and getting the open area, and Blankenship delivers it. Muther's best day this year was four receptions against Oklahoma State for 26 yards. And now Tulsa comes back on second and short, gets the first down. There's Mosley with the football. You know, we talked about the no huddle. Tulsa has been doing that all year long, but now with Josh Blankenship in the football game, have elected not to go with the no huddle. He's going to huddle every time, it seems like. Get the play called in the huddle, go up to the line of scrimmage and get things set up. Normally they would go to the line of scrimmage. What they've done in the past is they'd go up to the line of scrimmage and see how the defense has deployed. And they would actually call the play from the sideline and signal to the quarterback. A little bit different approach here in the second half. Also fans looking for a homecoming comeback. Hurricane down seven. First and ten at the 44. Third quarter. Blankenship got a man. Smith intercepted and coming back the other way. Hawaii picking it off down to the 40-yard line and making the interception was D. Miller, junior from Horn Lake, Mississippi. And that one was a... Smith should have caught the football. It came right off his hands to Miller, and Miller knew what to do with it. Well, the ball was a little bit high, but Nate Jackson, the free safety, comes over number 12, and he does a good job of laying some wood on receiver. You see Smith there at the top of your screen. Watch the hit here come, and he sees him coming. Then D. Miller just takes the rebound for the interception. Yeah, easy for me to say, sitting up here, should have caught the football. <laughs> That's a great shot there to give you an idea of what was headed. And that could make it or break it for most receivers coming over the middle, though, Gary. Those are not easy patterns. Well, those are those are plays that safeties like to make. Hey, exposed receiver up in the air, I can make a big hit. And why keeps it on the ground with Von Weaver carrying the football. 5.54 to go here in the third. Early in the ballgame, Hawaii had success running the football with 
with Weaver, but started out with Afatia Thompson, starting out here in the third quarter, going with Weaver. I would expect to see Thompson back in the ball game a little bit here. They're just these two guys. They run the tailback position. They share time back there, and they feel comfortable with either one in the football game. Farley making the tackle that time. 5:54, second down and nine for Robinson and the Warriors. Weaver cuts it back up across the 35-yard line to the 34 for Weaver. Weaver stopped on the play by Jeremy McClure. I believe Justin Dixon in on that play. Yeah, just a zone stretch play by the offense. The offensive linemen all step to their right, move out, push, 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 push. The receivers trying, I mean, the running back trying to break cut back against the grain for a play. Well, Hawaii hopes that that holds true. 121 yards today. It's meant victory in the two other occasions this year. They lead it by seven. Robinson will like more, of course. 35. Got a man and completed the 15 at the five and touchdown, Hawaii. Stutzman with the TD reception. A 33-yarder, and Hawaii is back up by 13. Well, I don't know if Robinson has taken needle point in school, but he needles this ball right in there between the linebackers. Watch him. He waits for Stutzman all the way across the field. He goes right between two linebackers. Stutzman makes the grab and gets right up the middle of the field for the score. 33 yards on the play from Robinson. And Hanum on for the kick and it is good and hawaii is back up by 14 as the warriors were at the half stay with us here in the third It's all systems go at your Southern California Nissan dealer with the Nissan family of Frontier trucks. Like the all-new 2000 Frontier Crew Cab with four real doors. Or the rugged 2000 Frontier Desert Runner. During Test Drive 2000, buy a new 2000 regular cab or king cab and get a value truck package. Plus $1,000 cash back for $2,100 in total savings. Test Drive 2000. We challenge you to test drive the future today at your Southern California Nissan dealer. Test Drive 2000 is on. <laughs> you ever just have one of those days? Well, at Farmers Insurance, everything we do is about getting things back to normal. Isn't that what insurance is supposed to do? Farmers, get you back where you belong. The Omega Threat Management Group, experts in the management of stalking, workplace violence, and executive protection, providing a full array of protective services for clients worldwide. Hey, what you doing this Sunday? Get more pregame power one hour earlier with NFL This Morning. These guys all made their name on the Nike Tour. Who's the next champion? Santa Anita Live brings thoroughbred racing to net two. The Kings rule. Ziggy Palfy and the boys battle Owen Nolan and the Sharks. And if you missed anything this weekend, our team's got it covered. Welcome back to Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you on Fox Sports Net. WAC football and Hawaii back up to a 14-point cushion over the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa. The Rainbow Warriors getting it on a 33-yard touchdown pass from Robinson to Stutzman, and it's 28-14. to And Hannum will kick it off now. Mosley at the 11. Rolls across to the 25-yard line where Tulsa will get possession. Well, back-to-back -back possessions stopped by interceptions for Tulsa now. Let's see how Blankenship and crew react. Stutzman today, three catches, 63 yards, and a TD on the last one for 33 yards. And sophomore from Honolulu came in with 30 receptions on the day, kept that drive off on the pass from Robinson. Mosley scampers to the 35-yard line. And Nate Jackson makes the tackle as 
4.40 to go in the third period, 28-14. Almost a throwaway down here, Bill. Second and one. You know, expect to maybe do something. Go for a big play. They probably have a good chance to get back on third down as they're going to try to boot pass again. Savage roll. Oh, almost intercepted. Blankenship rolling out that time and off the fingers of a couple players, including Nate Jackson. Uh, D. Miller, the safety. He's seen that play three times today, number 17. He's going to see Blankenship rolling out here to the near sideline. He's going to break in, try to make the play. Miller does. And also off of Nate. Two Hawaii Rainbow Warriors almost with the pick. Well, Miller's the guy. If you look at Blankenship's numbers, that uh, Jim Jones just gushing about uh, last night as far as his potential. <laughs> Mr. Jr. And a brother on the club as well. Daryl. Right. Push up front from Mosley. See they spot the football on a third and one. Not giving him a generous spot. No, I don't know if he got it. Line. Oh sticks out to look at this one, Bill. Don't you love it when the guy runs 40 yards across the field? To I know exactly where it's going to go. <laughs> it's an exact science. Josh Blankenship looking on. And Blankenship, only two interceptions all last year, and he gets two in about 10 minutes here today. And neither one of them poorly thrown footballs, though. Well, actually, the one was that Albert yeah. got. He, he threw that ball behind Savage. And his credit, Albert, though, he was in good coverage there. He was underneath the receiver, and it would have had to been a picture-perfect throw to get it in there. And they got the first down on the measurement, and Blankenship brings his crew back up. And it'll be first and 10 at the 36. 28-14, Hawaii. Total action with four to go, and Tulsa did possession. On the shotgun this time for Blankenship and the long count. Bought himself a little time, and this one almost picked off again as coming up out of the secondary was Shondell Tucker on the tip ball that was intended for D.J. Barnett. Yeah, that slipped off Barnett's hands, and Tucker, the cornerback, just breaking downhill on the ball. Almost made a big play. A lot of time running off the clock between plays being called here and run to the line of scrimmage. Actually, Blankenship's having to call timeout because they don't have the play, the personnel in the, in the game that they need to get the play going. So a timeout for the Golden Hurricane, and Blankenship will come over and visit with Coach Raider in Tulsa now, down to just one timeout remaining. You see Hawaii with a pair, and we'll see if that'll factor in. But certainly Coach Raider figuring, hey, kind of a fragile team at this point. 28-14, every possession becomes a big one, I guess, Gary. Yeah, they do. Every possession from here on in, they really do. And, you know, Josh Blankenship at quarterback, he's you know, he's trying to do all the right things out there and not make any mistakes. And sometimes you have to call a timeout just to get yourself settled down. And it's probably the better call is to make the time, call the timeout instead of put your team in a bad situation on a play that you really need to execute well on. Let's take a look at the, right, the uh, standings here of the Western Athletic Conference. And with Rice having won earlier today, and the Owls at 4-0, the only unbeaten in the league, 5-3 overall after an 0-3 start. And Hawaii at 2-1, trying to push it to 3-1 here today. TCU dropping to 2-2, two and, two, and you see Tulsa down there sitting at 0-3 and, and just trying to get anything positive going. Fresno State here is the uh, preseason favorite in this conference, not doing all that well. 1-1 one in one the conference, have a game later on today. And that's a score, 14 to 6, updated. They may go to two and one and still be in position to, to challenge for the conference, but Rice in the driver's seat you know, firmly now with four wins. Fresno, uh, knowing that that loss in Dallas to SMU may come back to haunt them as far as uh, the title in the WAC and a chance to go on Las Vegas and meet up with the Mountain West champ. All right, Tulsa second and 10 now from the 36. Low snap, Blankenship handles it completes it just short of the first down at the 45 yard line Damon Savage and Quincy LeJay well if you have a player to juggle a ball you come back to your ace Damon Savage well Damon Savage does a square in right across the field and I tell you Josh Blanks is just waiting for him to come open here Savage just turns in 
Going to go across the field between the hash marks, and the quarterback's going to deliver. Watch him go for the football. Goes up high and juggles it. Good spot on the play and a first down for Tulsa. Savage sets up now on the second of the first and ten. They do move the chains again. Why show and blitz? They do bring one. Blankenship got a man again. Savage at the 28 yard line and he steps out of bounds. Well, Bill, that's the same play they had earlier in the ball game that Josh Blankenship threw it over Savage's head and out of bounds. That time he hit the mark. Good route that time by the inside receiver clearing the zone. You'll see there underneath Savage, who's in the slot. Blankenship looks down the middle of the field. He knows he's going to have Savage outside. Good route. Good. Good situation by Blankenship, throwing the ball on timing to Savage. 19 yards on that one after 11 on the first one. It's another first down. And Blankenship is going to use Tulsa's final timeout of the afternoon. Yes, that is the case. And you see the look on Coach Raider's face. On first and ten, that is a tough call. Yeah, you want that time out. You're driving. Things are going well for you. You have a chance to get back in this ball game. Might want to use that down the road. And now they're out of those timeouts, and he's going to have to go up the line of scrimmage and really go with anything he has called now. Don't forget, coming up next, we've got more college football from the Big 12, Texas A&M and Oklahoma from Norman. The Aggies ranked number 13 in the country, showing the ability to throw it this year as well as run the football. And, of course, Oklahoma under first-year head coach Bob Stoops and their turnaround, trying to see if they can get a lead and hold the lead after uh, losing it against Notre Dame and Texas. A&M and Oklahoma coming up next on Fox Sports Net. Now, down the road, next week, Three thirteen remaining here as it's 28-14 Hawaii. I'll give you the schedule a little bit later on as far as what's ahead for these two teams. Blankenship sets up out of the shotgun. Muter in tight and Savage the wide out to the right, two to the left. And it again back to Savage. Savage to the 20 and scrambling and may have a first down. Think he does at the 18-yard line. Early in the year, the Savage show. Yeah, Damon Savage early in the year was hampered by an ankle injury, not showing any ill effects of it for him now. And run the ball very, very well. Little slip screen to the wide receiver. He just fakes out, steps back, and has one blocker in front of him. Does a good job finding some open area and a good eight or nine yards on the play, Bill. Yeah, and Savage uh, was still struggling a bit with that ankle injury in practice this week, but toughing it out here, and you see... Six catches, 109 yards, and they'll come out and measure. You know, one of the stories with June Jones and his team this year, how well they played, is a lot on the defensive side of the ball. We haven't talked a lot about defense coordinator Greg McMacken, who, who was with the Seahawks for three years as a defensive coordinator, now coordinating the, the defense as we see the measurement. Coordinating the defense now for June Jones and the, the Hawaii attack, and really put them in a good situation. They are playing with a lot of confidence, and uh, that defensive unit, they've come up with some plays this year, a few turnovers, and things have gone very, very well for them. And, you know, you have to credit the defensive side of the ball as well as this run-and-shoot offense that June Jones has put in. And, you know, it's kind of a team effort. They have a philosophy, you know, that, that we're all going to win together, and the confidence they've built uh, with, four, with four wins this year is really, really unique to this football team. Yeah, and you don't look at yardage so much because with their offense, they score quickly many times, and they know their defense is going to give up some yards and give up some points. It's just a different mentality. But well, Jones really happy with the whole staff he's put together there. First, or second and one. Blankenship looks, intercepted, no, and it falls. The juggling act in the end zone, going for Savage, and also down there was Muther, and Jackson did everything but catch it. Let's take another look here. Well, here's Damon Savage on the outside. It's one-on-one -on -one man coverage, and you can see the hand there. That's what the penalty's going to be. You can't, you know, inhibit the receiver down the field past the five-yard zone. It's going to be pass interference on the defense. Tucker, number 21, the defender. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. 
Well, actually holding in that situation, the ball had not been delivered, so. That's a good, a big assignment for Shondell Tucker out there, having to cover their best receiver man to man, and Damon Savage is probably one of the best receivers in this conference. So it'll set up a first and goal from the nine yard line. First they put up the eight, now it's at the nine. And a drive that started on the Tulsa 26 after two straight drives stopped by interceptions, and Blankenship's now got them after the penalty. First and goal from the nine. Down 14 points here in the final minutes of the third period. Mosley, good hard run to inside the five-yard line before Hawaii meets him with about four, led by Nate Jackson in the secondary. Listen in on Mosley's run. Those are tough yards. When yeah. you get inside the 10-yard line, these defenses toughen up, and they're bringing everything they can to stop these guys. Second and goal from the five for Tulsa. 2-14 and counting here in the third period. Savage wide left, Smith to the right. Two tight end offense. Thank to Mosley. Blankenship hammered back on the 16-yard line as coming through Yafet Warren for Hawaii. Well, Warren, the outside linebacker, just comes untouched from the outside. You'll see him up here. He's just going to come, and nobody's going to touch him. Hey, he just doesn't bite on the fake, and he's right there on Blankenship for a big play. Second sack for Warren, and Blankenship now brings him back at third and goal from the 15. Tulsa may be looking field goal here unless they come up with the big play. An important thing here for Blankenship, don't make a mistake, don't throw it unnecessarily, get the ball away, at least get the field goal. Blankenship going to keep the football and do just that. Gets yeah. it down to about the 10-yard line, and they'll have a 27-yard field goal. Yeah, that's a good, smart play by the young quarterback. Instead of throwing it and forcing it in the end zone and making a mistake, take what the defense gives you and get the ball down and give your field goal team a chance to get on the field and put some points on the board. Yeah, still a long haul to go. 101 in the third period. That'll bring Chris Ernest on. Three of six this year. You see his longest has been a 39-yarder. Ernest last year, three of five. His longest was a 38-yarder. This one, um, 27, and he misses. Mm -hmm. Well, from the near hash mark, he's going to kick across his body and get it back inside. He leaves it out to the right side, and... But Dave Rader, he, you know, he can't be pleased with that. His offense is bringing the ball down the field very, very well. And you want to get some points on the board as we watch the kick. Watch him here. He's not going to come across and just leave it out there. Ever so close. So, Hawaii, as the crowd, just a stunned silence here. The Dave Rader's expression, I think, echoed silently by the fans, if you know what I mean. And Hawaii will come right back and keep it on the ground. And a loose football that recovered by the Warriors, and they'll have a first down to boot. Stutzman, I think, fell on. Uh, Weaver just running outside here. He cuts back inside, and I think someone's going to get a hand on the football as he's going down. Watch him here. There it is. The ball's popped out. Farley, I believe. Yeah, the Sean linebacker. Farley, the linebacker, does a good job of just popping the ball out. and It didn't bounce right for Tulsa. Stutzman smartly jumped on it quickly. And so the defense not quitting, even though that's got to be depressing to that bunch, too. We see that team drive it down inside the 10 and end up missing on a 27-yard field goal attempt. Weaver keeps the football. First and 10, stop for basically no gain, though, and that may be the end, it will be the end of the third period, unless we're going to have a timeless play here again. <laughs> I think we've had enough of those. And we'll take a little break as well on Fox Sports Net. Stick around. 28-14 Hawaii entering the fourth.
It's the beat of a different drummer. Dodge Intrepid. Well-equipped 19950. All right, Captain, we're going to have a coin toss now. If there's a team, we'll call it in the air. Um, we want a good, clean game. Um, we're all professionals here. Does anyone have change for a dollar? Oh. Want to get away? Now you can. For only $99 or less, you can fly coast to coast when you purchase by November 3rd and travel October 5th through March 31st. You are now free to move about the country. Do you want to save up to 60% on your auto insurance? Of course you do. We compared other auto insurance rates with Survival Insurance Brokerage. Who do you think was the lowest? This is the same coverage. It isn't them. Or them. Or them. It's Survival. Whether you're an unlucky driver or preferred, if you want to save up to 60% on your auto insurance, as always, call 1-800-SURVIVAL now. We have a standoff in progress at 211 Hazelwood. Sir, drop the chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. Drop it. I said, drop the chalupa. Put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Get your hands on the new Chalupa. With a shell so crispy, flaky, chewy, tasty, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Just 99 cents, only at Taco Bell. Better get some backup. Roger. <laughs> Welcome back to Skelly Stadium. Fourth quarter to begin. Hawaii with the football. Bill Land, Gary Reasons with you on Fox Sports Net with 28-14 Warrior lead. Robinson to throw the football. And complete to Weaver, the first down. That was a great little one-handed grab by Weaver on the outside. Ball's delivered out there, grabs it with his left hand and pulls it in for the catch and gets a first down for, for Hawaii. But this is a situation in the ball game, Bill, where Tulsa's defense really needs to rise to the occasion. And they've been averaging a couple of turnovers. They've gotten two turnovers per game on average throughout the season. Today, Hawaii has not turned the ball over. And if I was out there on defense or defensive coordinator, Pat Henderson, I'd be telling these guys, let's be play opportunistic. Let's make a big play and get our offense back on the field. It is now first and 10 at the 45 of Hawaii. Robinson hands it off right up the middle. Weaver, 45, another first down for the Rainbow Warriors. Oklahoma, Texas A&M coming your direction on Fox Sports Net. Pay attention here. Viewers in Texas and Oklahoma will be leaving us shortly to see the Big 12 game between the Aggies and the Sooners at the top of the hour. Those of you in the Tulsa and Oklahoma City areas that would like to see the conclusion of this game, you'll need to change channels to the following locations. You see in Tulsa AT&T Cable Channel 9, and Cox Channel 22, Multimedia Channel 35. That'll be at the top of the hour for those of you in this area. Should not affect any of our viewers on Fox Sports Net 2 in Hawaii or Southern California, though. You'll be safe. Robinson on first and 10, going for it. Got it! Inside the five-yard line, a great reception, and stepping out of bounds at the five was Ashley Lelly. Robinson going deep, and Hawaii knocking on the door for a three-touchdown lead. And Dan Robinson threw this football. Ashley Lelly was just running down the field. He had no idea the ball had been thrown. He turns his head at the last minute. Robinson's going to deliver to the outside and get it deep and high, and the ball is just going to lay out there. And, and Lelly, when he turns his head around, hey, there's a football. I make the catch. Wow. I'll tell you, that's excellent. What a reception. What hands. Latched onto that sucker, and now Hawaii first defense, and goal at the four-yard line. Defense, 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 defense. Weaver upended. Tulsa defense still trying to make something happen. Brett Butler, Richard freshman out of Jenks, makes the stop. And that's what's called a TFL, a tackle for loss. Gets in the backfield, Butler does, and makes a good tackle on a running back. Clock moving at 13.52. And Robinson will bring him out. Well, we talked about the run and shoot. Can it be a possession offense where you can grind it out keep the clock moving and put opponent away. Well, here, they've done a little bit of everything on this drive. They've gone with the bomb, they've gone with the run. Draw, and now the touchdown pass. 
and Stutzman with the grab. So Stutzman gets his second TD of the afternoon. Fred Stutzman from Dan Robinson and the five yard pass play. Good for the TD. Well, they just stretch the defense, send three receivers to the left side, one, two, three across the board, and Robinson just finds the open area, and it's Stutzman in the seam. Nobody there to, con to contest the throw, and good execution. Hand him on for the point after with a flag thrown. Stutzman's had quite a day today. For the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still cross for point. So they'll move it back. Stutzman, there's his work. Five receptions, 68 yards, and a pair of TDs. And Hawaii, after getting a couple of touchdown runs from Thompson in the first half, have gone to the air here since that point. And this kick is good by Hannum for the point after. 35-14 with 13.30 to go in the ballgame. Stay with us on Fox Sports Day. Gravity, the force that holds the Earth in orbit around the sun, also holds the car to the road around a hairpin turn. But in extreme conditions, even gravity can use help. Assuring performance of the RL with vehicle stability assist. From Acura. Hey, watch some tickets to the football game? Today's game? Yeah. It's almost half over. Well, it's a really good game. Why didn't you guys go? Uh, give up this spot? Now at AMBM, come get your free tailgate ticket for huge discounts on food and drinks. I'm going back in. Well, uh, hurry up. The yeah, second half's about to start. Girl. You know that there's one thing that I love, but it's not you I'm thinking of. I want the ultimate cheeseburger. Bring it down. Cheese, meat, cheese, cheese, meat, and that's it. Love this. Our target is men. What's a target? Welcome back with 13.30 to go here in the ball game. Tulsa to get the ball on the kickoff. And again, remind our viewers here in Texas and Oklahoma that you'll be catching Texas A&M Texas a and Oklahoma at the top of the hour. And again, we'll tell our other viewers where in Tulsa and Oklahoma City you can catch the remainder of this game. It'll be coming up in just a minute or two. Shroud with a kickoff. Mosley will let it go, and Tulsa will get it first and 10 on its own 20. Down 21, 35 to 14. Bill Land and Gary Reasons with you here in Tulsa at Skelly Stadium. And a bright and sunny homecoming has turned a little dark as the shadows cover most of this field now. And Josh Blankenship comes on. For Josh Blankenship, the young quarterback, the freshman, his first college start. He's now this is the numbers he's put up today, 189 yards of TD, but he's had a couple interceptions, a couple of balls that really didn't go his way, a few tips, and Hawaii has capitalized on those miscues. First and 10, the ball on the 20-yard line, 35-14 Hawaii. Mosley, the 25, and out of bounds, and just short of the first down, it would appear. Again, we remind our viewers, Coming up, Texas A&M and Oklahoma, the Big 12 game from Norman. You will see it. Viewers in Texas and Oklahoma are going to be leaving us now to go to that game. And those of you in Tulsa and Oklahoma City who'd like to see the conclusion of this game need to change channels. AT&T in Tulsa, Channel 9. And now let's take it down to Ron Thulin, Artie Gigantino, and Norman. Our viewers still with us here. Mosley rips it off to the 40 and then gets out of bounds. And Tulsa may not be quick yet as Quincy LeJay makes the tackle here. 
And a quick, quick little hitter to Mosley to the outside there. Don Douglas and Aaron Haddock, the left guard and left tackle, do a good job opening the hole up for him. And the defense was shifted to the other side of the field, so Mosley had some open territory to run. 13-15 on the clock, 35-14. Tulsa first and 10 for the 49-yard line. And Mosley headed toward the century mark today. Mosley, best effort, 161-yarder against Southwest Missouri in the season opener on 22 carries. Blankenship again in the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket. Short man, and it is complete. But not much. At the 49 of Hawaii as Ulbricht made the tackle on the play. Gerald Smith, the receiver. Got a full, almost a full quarter to go here. 13 minutes, Bill. Tulsa, you know what? Good field position. Put a score on the board and play opportunistic defense. Have a chance to get back in this football game. Yeah, it is not impossible. And not the way these teams are able to move the football. And, and Tulsa's got to be telling their defense, hey, guys, they haven't turned it over yet today. Maybe they will if we keep aggressively getting after it. First things first, offensively, and that pass complete to Donald Moten, his first reception of the day and his second of the year. Sophomore from Sherman, Texas, 5'11", 185. Well, watch Olbrich, number 44, the top of your screen. He's going to make the big hit outside as Blankenship just eludes the, the rush here. They put a little blitz on the outside, but watch the pop here at the end of the play. Olbrich, the big linebacker, explosion. You want to see that. You see his legs and his hips move forward on the tackle. Hey, that's that's picture-perfect tackle. Boy, you don't want to meet this guy when he's got the bow on his side. He has certainly been all that he was billed. Second and three for Tulsa. And the scrimmage of 44. Short drop. Blankenship gets it off and complete for the first down inside the 33-yard line. And making the grab. Andrew LaCrone, I believe. Well, that's a good little play here. It's a three-step drop for Josh Blankenship. Watch all the offensive linemen try to do a little cut block. Boom, they're going to try to cut everybody. It doesn't really work because everybody's in his face, but there's a good job of delivering it out to, out to LaCrone. And Blankenship stood in the pocket, stood his ground, and made a completion. Quickly, Tulsa goes to work on first down, and Moten dances to the 27-yard line. Ulbrich makes the tackle there. Well, we'll expect Tulsa to pick up the pace here, play, to call in the plays offensively, get into the line of scrimmage a little quicker than they have been today. As we talked about earlier, Bill, they're used to going with the no-huddle situation. They probably need to do that here early in the ballgame. What they're doing now is a little mini-huddle, about three, three-and-a-half yards behind the line of scrimmage, and then calling the play from there. Yeah, this is not a tough adjustment for them, not when they've been operating that way all season. Second down and five from the 27, down 21 now. Mosley, great run inside the 20, down to the 19-yard line. Mosley, where Nate Jackson makes the tackle. The other part of this is... If Tulsa has any hope, they realize, all right, we not only got to score, we got to score three times, and we have no timeouts. And not that you'd be worried about it now, but you know you're going to need them, or you'd like to be able to have them available to you if you're in position to get back into the game late. So you hustle now to save those seconds. That's exactly right. You have to work the clock when you're on offense because you have no control when you're on defense. First to 10 at the 19 after Mosley's run, and he is over the 100-yard mark now. And right up the middle. Churning away in Tulsa with D.J. Barnett, freshman from Okemogi. Tackle by Jackson, a tackle on the play. And the flag, I should say, the play. And going to be against Tulsa, I believe. Something we haven't talked about today, Bill, is Steve Wiedauer, the uh, offensive guard who was injured, came back last week against TCU and is playing today. Holy, on the offense, 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. Take a look at it. I think uh, we'll show this one to you. Well, Ulbrich, obviously, is a middle linebacker, makes a lot of plays, but it's a wide defense. So you come in there and you grab him, get the big tight end, try to grab him, carry, and he does. See the flag on fire right there? Yep. What that ref was smiling about. Well, he <laughs> caught you. He did his job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> There's Ulbricht's work today. Blankenship now faced with a first and 19, 28. Nowhere to go for 
for Josh Blankenship. Hawaii surrounds him, kept him in the pocket, and then coming up with the play, Phil Austin, senior from Los Angeles, six foot 184, as he makes the tackle. And now, second in a mile. Dave Rader doesn't want his offense to have negative plays like this. Anytime you make a make a mistake, let somebody come off the outside clean to your quarterback without being able to throw the football on a, a sack result. It's not good execution by this offense. And now driving, trying to put points on the board. It comes up second in, in about 20, Bill. From the 28 again. Blankenship in trouble again. And a knock ball loose and a fumble. Tulsa, no. Let's see who they... Austin was again the guy who came through, though. Well, it's a protection system problem here because they're not sliding to the outside. Austin's at the bottom of the screen. Watch him here. He's going to come from the outside. It's a little corner blitz. Hey, the, the running back doesn't get out there to make the play, make the block, and the result is a just going to call it an incomplete pass. Yeah, almost a death of yeah. your quarterback, though. I mean, Austin's already juiced after getting one the play before, and then Barnett uh, just missed it, got air. And now it is third down and 27. The ball on the 35-yard line. Here they come again. He steps up, fires for the end zone. Incomplete. May have gone through the hands of Scholes, who dove to give it everything he had. Amazing that Blankenship could come that close on the play after being hammered twice in a row and then having to step up under pressure again. Well, Blankenship did a good job of eluding the rush and then throwing the ball out. He put the ball out there. Scholes actually has a chance to make this catch. Goes through his hands. He dives and almost comes up with it. Watch Blankenship try to elude the rush. You see the tackler coming from the top of the screen. Nobody blocks him, and he just heaves it out there. Watch Scholes at the end of the play dive and try to grab the ball. He has it go right through his hands. Well, it would have been a great catch. Fourth down at 27 now for the Hurricane. Here's Blankenship's numbers on the day. 20 of 34 for 213, a touchdown, and two INTs. They're coming after him again. And it's incomplete, and Hawaii will get the football back now with 826 remaining in the game. Well, four straight plays, they ran the same blitz. Two corners coming outside the tackles. They didn't pick it up any time, and so they came again with it, put pressure on the quarterback, and good coverage behind. And June Jones, who understand that his predecessor, Von Appen, won five games in his three seasons as the head coach. June Jones is about to get his fifth win of the year here in Tulsa. Stay with us. Want to see a neat trick? All I do is push a button, and we have a whole new Ford Windstar. You can get dual remote sliding rear doors, new side impact airbags, and even a rear bumper that tells you how close you are. The Windstar is just one of the reasons you'll want to visit your Ford dealer, especially now with all these great deals he's got on the 99s. A woman had to have thought this up. You know, most men get pretty shook up about losing their hair. But today, many of them are learning about Bosley Medical. They use your own living hair to fill in the thin spots. Just look at that. It really works. You can treat it like real hair because it is real hair. Your own naturally growing hair. So you don't have to worry about it. Bosley Medical is the world's most experienced hair restoration practice. For over 25 years, they have performed more than 130,000 procedures using the innovative micrografting techniques pioneered by founder Dr. L. Lee Bosley. Each surgeon at Bosley Medical is board certified and individually trained by me. So if you want to have your own naturally growing hair back, call this number for more information. We'll send you this free video and in-depth guidebook that gives you the real facts about hair restoration. There's no cost and absolutely no obligation. So do it for yourself. Call now and get the real results you've been looking for. It's your real hair. You can't do better than real. Sharks King, Sunday at 6 on Fox Sports Net. Five fourteen Hawaii over Tulsa with 8.26 to go in the ball game. And the University of Hawaii taking over after Tulsa giving it up on downs. First and 10 for Hawaii. 
Bill Land, Gary Reasons, the Fox Sports Net crew with you. As it's interesting to see what Hawaii does here, Gary, the run and shoot. They've had success running today. Would you believe that they continue going back, try to just kill this clock as much as they can? Well, they stay in their offense, but they will run the football. They want to manage the clock here, at least throw good completions outside the receiver so they can make positive yardage. Flag is thrown. Pass is complete to Stutzman. Stutzman's been busy today, Bill. Yeah. Flag is against Hawaii. Well, interesting. Coach Jones talking to us last night about receivers and quarterbacks and saying that he's in a unique situation at Hawaii and he thinks he can have a unique offense that can retract great players, particularly wideouts and quarterbacks. And I think today's a pretty good example. They spread around. We'll get more into that. Let's take a look at what's happened here today. On the offense, motion man turned up field too soon. Penalty's declined. Second half. Tulsa, second half, they moved the football, but they've only gotten the one touchdown after the 216 yards. Hawaii with a couple of uh, INTs, and then the running game has been big for the Warriors all day. Yeah, both Thompson and Weaver run the ball very well for this Hawaii offense, and it takes a lot of pressure off the passing game, and they've done a very good job with it today. So that's been a couple of TD receptions and a couple of TD runs for Thompson, and now it's been Weaver's turn, and he carries it to the 40-yard line for Hawaii here on the second down call. We talked about the recruiting game and June Jones, I'll tell you, with his pedigree and his background, he's going to bring a lot of kids out to that program in Hawaii. He's going to bring some quality kids. Talk about the wide receiver position, also the quarterback position. Those two positions on, on, his, on an offense, hey, you want to get the best talent that you can. You're going to put up some numbers and you're going to turn some heads if you have a goal as a as a young collegiate football player to play in the NFL on Sundays. You know, this might be an offense you want to showcase your talents in. It's a lot of fun, that's for sure. Third and five. Robinson and dropped this time by Von Weaver. Well, what did he mention to us? I think the other part of it that June Jones certainly brings is having been at Hawaii, understanding the university, the lifestyle, and also in recruiting that everybody wants to take that visit, Gary, but you don't have unlimited visits to offer to recruits. And he's very impressed that last year they offered to 29 yeah. players, and normally you, you don't expect to bat this high. 26 wanted to accept, and obviously they couldn't give all of those out. But uh, he said, that tells me that we're selecting the right people to bring in for this. Long kick by Trout. And Braggs brought down at the 26-yard line. That's where Tulsa will start the next possession. It was 7-16 to go here in the fourth quarter. Another flag there at the end of the play, and a little more of that pushing and shoving, I believe, going on on the field there, Bill. And two teams have been at it pretty heavy today. These big offensive linemen and defensive linemen, they've been pushing inside there and in this kick return game. After the play was over, personal foul on the way, 15-yard penalty, first down. Will help Tulsa out field position wise. Well, just imagine how Hawaii has felt the past few years doing these trips when they come over here to the 48 states and have gone home on a, on a loss. And just imagine what that plane ride oh. is like, how long it is, and how, 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 how much they would dread going back. You know, with positive things happen for their football team, hey, that plane ride is going to be a whole lot of fun these, this time. Yeah, they're flying to L.A. tonight, and with the time difference, they'll get a little bit of a break there and a chance to see some of the families for the California players and then back home tomorrow afternoon before they get ready for their next out. And just three road trips this year. 35-14. Blankenship. Out of the pocket, keeping the football, and he runs for the first down. As Josh dives down to the 48-yard line, and Tulsa will have first down again. Jafet Warren makes the tackle. Well, you see the defense here that Mackin is using for his Hawaii defense is a little bit more conservative now. They're going to play back, and they're going to allow the, the quarterback to throw the ball underneath. Don't make any big plays. They don't want to allow this Tulsa team to get on the board unnecessarily. They're going to make them drive it down the field and They'll play good coordinated defense, zone defense. They've got two deep zone going right now and has been effective for them. At the 47 of the Rainbow Warriors. Blankenship now motioning to 
Mosley where he wanted him, and there was a mix-up on the alignment. Yeah, out of timeouts now. Now he's forced with taking a delay a game penalty, trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage. You know, as a quarterback, a young freshman quarterback coming in, and you know, he did play well in high school, Bill, and he put up a lot of numbers, the Oklahoma High School Player of the Year, but now you start going against a defense who has Coach McMackin running that show, who's used to putting out defenses in the NFL. You're going to see a few things that you haven't seen before, and that's what's happened with Josh Blankenship here today. Yeah, just part of the growing process as he completes this one to Shoals, the touchdown reception earlier. And that is the positive, if there is, for Tulsa here, is that your quarterbacks can continue to gain experience and get better with each outing. He knows, too, now he is the guy. And before, I mean, good news, bad news. If you're struggling a little bit, all right, come on over here, Josh. We'll, we'll talk a little bit while you watch uh, Michael Wall go to work. Well, you don't have that option anymore. The other part of it is he knows he is the guy, and he's a very confident young man and a chance to get better with each outing. Smashed here in the interception. Hawaii's third of the day, and... Brought down inside the 40-yard line. Coming up with the interception, Anthony Smith, the junior from Los Angeles. Well, the protection just broke down on him here as he steps up into the pocket. Josh Blankenship is going to have the ball hit as he throws it. Comes around to the outside. The ball goes up to Anthony Smith, who's on the outside. The linebacker covering the ball didn't go where he wanted it to. It just, just ricocheted off, and Smith comes up with a big play. Visiting with Rocky Felker, the offensive coordinator there, and Iosa in on the play as well. Now Blankenship, 221 yards for the day, but the third interception for Josh, and Blankenship now on the year has been intercepted eight times and has three TD passes. Mike Harrison is the new quarterback here for Hawaii. Freshman from Bellflower, California, 6'1", 206, and June Jones realizing he doesn't need Dan Robinson in here, though, especially the way this game has been emotionally, to come in and get a hit and maybe suffer an injury. Uh, he is the guy to take them the rest of the way, and they're thinking now, hey, a possibility of winning the whack. Yeah, very much so, and Mike Harrison coming in, getting a few snaps, but Dan Robinson as a quarterback, we talked about him earlier in the show, Bill, he's 25 years old. You know, he sat out a year of college football, had a medical red shirt year, so here he is. He graduated high school in 1992, so it's a little bit different his style of play and what he can do and what he knows about the game, a little bit more than Josh Blankenship does, and he showed his, his talent today. As, you know, we know he's leading the WAC conference in passing and, and obviously in total offense, so Dan Robinson is a capable quarterback and leading this offense very well for June Jones. Colbert the drop on that play. Let's check in elsewhere in the WAC today as Fresno State 17-9 now leading UTEP. 17-9 Fresno over the Miners earlier. Rice stayed unbeaten at 4-0 with a win over TCU and that certainly hurts Hawaii from more than the standpoint of Rice being unbeaten but Rice has already beaten Hawaii. Gives you an idea of the strength of that team, though, winning in Hawaii over the Warriors. And convincing this one just off the fingertips of the receiver and then the defender for Tulsa as McCory. Yeah, McCory has a chance to make a play here on the tip as Harrison throws the ball outside. He's just behind the receiver. He can't come up with it. Almost a play. Puts him on the helmet, actually. Would have the ball in. Thirty-five, fourteen, with 4.58 remaining, and next up for Hawaii, fourth and nine. And our go ahead and go for it here. Harrison going deep and incomplete. Well covered by Tulsa, and the Hurricane, no flags, will take over on the downs. Mike Harrison coming into the ball game, you know, he knows he's just trying to move the football. He says, hey, I got fourth and long, and I might as well take a shot at the end zone. It actually might get one on the scoreboard. And pretty good throw that time. It's a little, little long. Yeah, he'd only thrown 15 passes coming in here today to 15 for 91 yards and one interception. So, chance for him to get some playing time. Do something other than build up this frequent flyer on base. 35-14, we'll take a brief break. We'll be right back. Buy Factory Direct. 
The jewelry exchange in Tustin has expanded and now has the largest factory showroom in the U.S. We guarantee our jewelry to be the lowest price. Compare Tiffany's one carat invisible bands for over $5,000 with the jewelry exchange's GVS quality for $1,600. One carat pendants are $249. Two carat tennis bracelets, $349. And one carat studs, $399. We carry thousands of rings, bracelets, and pendants. We guarantee all our jewelry to appraise for at least double. The jewelry exchange in Tustin. Want to see a neat trick? All I do is push a button, and we have a whole new Ford Windstar. You can get dual remote sliding rear doors, new side impact airbags, and even a rear bumper that tells you how close you are. The Windstar is just one of the reasons you'll want to visit your Ford dealer, especially now with all these great deals he's got on the 99s. A woman had to have thought this up. This morning on Fox Sports Net, it's the pregame show that covers the game with attitude. In order to succeed, you have to be willing to risk failure. With sharp analysis and keen insight that gets you inside the game. I think we're this year's version of the Falcons. Join Chris, Marv, Jackie, and Chris, plus the guys from Fox NFL Sunday. It's an action-packed hour of pregame power. Tune in. NFL This Morning on Fox Sports Net, followed by Fox NFL Sunday on your local Fox affiliate. 14 Hawaii over Tulsa with 451. No, not everybody's leaving here yet. Youngster hanging in there as Tulsa down 35-14 and the hurricane. A not so pleasant homecoming for TU in the fourth year in a row they've lost on homecoming. Hawaii's making some substitution on the defensive side of the ball. They didn't have their personnel right, so they're calling a timeout just as they came out. That's what everybody's looking forward to. Robinson gets a chance to savor the win. Next week in the WAC, Tulsa stays at home to take on Fresno. Rice will be in Dallas to meet SMU. Can the Mustangs get another upset win? And San Jose State will travel to UTEP to take on the Miners. Meanwhile, Hawaii at home, and that'll be an interesting matchup to go against TCU to see how TCU responds. This was a team picked to win this league. And after going to the Sun Bowl last year, now they got to make that long trip to Hawaii and meet a Hawaii team that's going to come away with a bunch of confidence after a win here today. Well, Hawaii is going to face another team that runs the football, much like Rice did on them a couple of weeks ago. TCU's running the ball very well with Danley and Tomlinson doing a very good job leading the nation in rushing. So he's going to have he's going to go out there to the, to the islands and see what he can do against this Hawaii bunch. Well, and I'm sure uh, Hawaii, which is uh, growing uh, great this year, and the turnaround under June Jones, I have a big full house there close to it for the TCU battle. Tulsa on the ground here on the first down and out toward midfield, the 48-yard line. Barnett carrying the football. Nate Jackson with a tackle and 4.43 to go. And move the change. It'll be first and 10, Tulsa. Well, this is the type of the game, time of the game, Bill, or, or season for this team, for this Tulsa team, where your seniors need to take over. And you need to get some leadership out there. Things have not gone very well. Damon Savage, you know, he's a wide receiver for this team and the most explosive player they have offensively. He's got to have to find a way to get himself in the game and to bring others along with him as well. And you got a young quarterback with Josh Blankenship, and there's a lot riding on his shoulders. But he can't do it alone. He has, no. to, he has to have some, some people rise to the occasion with a little bit more experience than he possesses. And, you know, do those things. A lot of times a quarterback, a young quarterback, is going to get into the huddle, and he's going to be calling Close the signals. Left. Delay on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains first step. He'll be calling the signals, but, you know, he's not really tested and proven in there, but you have to show that you have support of the quarterback and what he's trying to accomplish out there. Sure, he's going to have his days where he's got good days and bad days and good plays and bad plays, and hopefully the good ones are going to outweigh the bad ones. And the seniors that are around on this football team really need to rally and bring the bring the troops together and hopefully get some positive things happening for the Hurricane program. First and 15. Barnett again carrying the football. It's right back to where it was before, I think, at the 48-yard line. So picks up the five they lost in the penalty. And it'll be second down now. In Hawaii, we talked about allowing yards. Well, 4.6 best in the whack, and today, Tulsa 4.8. And 
but they've gotten them on some big plays. Other than that, Hawaii's really told them pretty well nicely. And they're getting them when the game's been decided. Blankenship completes it here at a Savage. Well, on that play, on the average per play, we talked about Dave Rader told me he said that they wanted to get up in the fives, 5.0 5 per, per play offensively, and they haven't gotten there yet. And, you know, they're making some plays, Bill, but they haven't been consistent. They had the first the, the drive of the first half, and I mean to start the ball game, the first drive, and the first drive of the second half they played. And beyond that, they've really sputtered. Haven't had a consistency, although Mosley has run very well with over 100 yards today. First and ten at the 38. Blankenship in trouble again and hammered as the snap dropped and then picked it up. And by the time he glanced up, here's Anthony Smith saying hello. Well, completely unprotected. He drops the snap. It's a low snap to begin with. And he's lucky he really doesn't get himself hurt here because he's just coming up and watch. He's going to pump fake, try to set something up and watch from the top of your screen. Pow, right there. Really, really unexposed. And, uh, you know, you'd take your big linebacker, Olbert, if he's in there and <laughs> he makes that hit. Might be a little different story. Yeah. Not that Smith didn't get his shot. Second down now in 15 for Tulsa with 244 and clock moving. And he completes this one to Shoals, and he's hit by four players. Stopped at the 35-yard line. Well, Campbell in on the stop as June Jones looks on, and Hawaii, 435 yards of total offense, better than their season average of 407. That is the best in the WAC. Tulsa, 355, and for the Hurricane, that is a boost. Theirs has been at 281. But again, not getting them when you need them. Third and seven. Blankenship gets rid of it and complete. And another first down for Tulsa. Savage steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Well, just take what the defense is going to give you. They're dropping back in zone soft coverage, and Savage just pushes up and turns back outside and catches the ball on the sideline. That play is going to be there time and time again this late in the ball game with them leading 35 to 14. So... You know, I, I don't expect them to try to do anything else here. They're, they're laying back, trying to take away the big play, and the offense just has to take what they're given. First to 10 at the 25 now. Blankenship. Trying to keep and go, and saw a little opening, but got brought down from behind as he was tripped up near the 23-yard line. Well, Hawaii, this is the third time they've met Tulsa. The last meeting was in 92 in Hawaii, and that's when Tulsa was not in the whack yet. 38-9, Hawaii the winner. Tulsa won the other time, 58-0 back here in 1951. I believe Don Ho was actually a part of that Hawaii football team. <laughs> well, it's been a while for trips from the island to Tulsa for the Rainbow Warriors. Blankenship dumps it off, and Gerald Smith sheds one man, scoops by to the 15, and has a first down at the 12-yard line with 1.14 remaining. First down for Tulsa. As the clock runs here, Tulsa's trying to put points on the board. But, Bill, you know, this this Hawaii bunch has really played very, very well all year, and June Jones has to be given a lot of credit for that. And, and I think the kids, they really they really enjoy playing for him and the, the style of offense that he brings and with Greg McMacken on defense. Really see a lot of bright things in the future for this Hawaii Rainbow team. And, Lincoln to trying to get out of bounds, does, and is dragged down. Yeah, and the other thing here about Hawaii is not only have they lost 19 in a row, they have lost 24 straight whack road games. And, I mean, it's hard to measure what that win at SMU did for them in their first trip back to the mainland. And then they come here and win again today. Talk about a team that is just building confidence with each outing. And they'll certainly get a big test from TCU next week. Savor to enjoy the long trip back home. You have the traditional lay there around uh, Coach June Jones. And it's one that I've seen on a couple of tapes and the games I've seen is, is adorned that every time he's been on the football field here for the, for the Hawaii team. Savage catches it at the five and goes to the three. Now remember, Tulsa doesn't have any timeouts. Miller made the tackle, so they're hurrying up. 
And did they get the first down? Yeah, they're going to measure. So they'll stop the clock as they measure. You know, I think June Jones likes the Hawaii lifestyle. You, as we saw today, Bill, he walked into the stadium. It's a little cool, a little crisp this morning as he came in. And what do we notice? He has on his loafers, no pants, socks. and no socks. <laughs> you know, you, look, you, you gotta love that. A coach is just relaxed, and you know, he's, he's got his island thing going on. And... Yeah. The lay goes on the road, yeah. the socks stay home if you had any to start with. <laughs> <laughs> and the whistle here, third down. For the snap. An eagle substitution on the defense. Half the distance remains stall. First down, first down. So Tulsa will get a first and goal now. And half the distance going to put it going at the four, but certainly it's more like the three-yard line from this vantage point. Hawaii, last time they had five wins in the season, 93. They went on to six and six. And here they sit at five and two. Now they're saying it is third down. And complete touchdown, Tulsa. In the end zone, Gerald Smith with the grab. A little consolation as Gerald Smith gets his second touchdown reception of the year. And Blankenship, his second touchdown pass of the game. That went to Shoals earlier with 15 seconds to go. Tulsa's on the board again. Well, you have to build on little things sometimes in a drive late in the ball game. Even though you're really out of the game, a chance to put points on the board and executing, those are little things that you can use as a positive teaching thing and things you can rely on. And the point after is also good. And Tulsa makes it 35 to 21. And for the Hurricane, most points they've had since the season opening win over Southwest Missouri State. You know, Bill, one of the interesting things about Hawaii and what they're doing offensively and defensively, offensively with June Jones running the run and shoot, it's very much like if you think of Rice and their running attack. They run the wishbone, which is not a, an option team, which or the, the spread option they run, which a lot of teams don't see all the time. It's not something you can prepare for. Very much so the same thing with the run and shoot offense. It's a very much predicated four wide receiver. They're very regimented in what they do, and teams can't prepare for it. And these guys who go out and practice it every single day the same way over and over again, those are the things that they are going to be able to really enhance as they go on. And so they're going to have a chance to win a lot of games, especially for teams that aren't used to playing them. I wouldn't be surprised to see them, if they execute and get some more players out there, be some really large Division 1A programs in the near future because that's the type of program that they want to develop. Yeah, they've got, uh, it's an unusual setting, and you can do some different things that just wouldn't be able to do at any other school, really any other school. A lot of attractive uh, things about the University of Hawaii and not just the weather and the, the paradise type setting. 35-21 with 15 seconds to go and Tulsa to kick it off here. Some other numbers, Savage nine catches, 133 yards for the Hurricane today. That drive, 11 plays, 65 yards, capped off by the TD pass from Blankenship to Smith. The onside kick goes out of bounds. our viewers in the Tulsa and Oklahoma City area to conclusion of this. Go back to Fox Sports Net to catch Texas A&M and Oklahoma. And for the others that are joining around the country, you'll go to that game directly. And also, after A&M and Oklahoma, it's Oregon and Arizona tonight at 9.15 from the Pac-10. So a full day of college football here on Fox Sports Net. the final play of the game as Tulsa out of timeouts and Harrison takes the snap Hawaii takes the knee and that is it and Hawaii has scored a 35-21 victory and June Jones racks up victory number five against just two losses three and one in the whack Tulsa loses sixth in a row to one and six on the year and now 0-4 in Western Athletic Conference play and they led at the half. Tulsa came out, got back within a touchdown, but Hawaii answered again. Well, Hawaii had more to offer today. They developed you know, what they needed to offensively, got some big plays when they needed to, and actually executed a lot better than Tulsa did throughout the most of the day, Bill.
And June Jones and Dave Rader visit after this one as Dan Robinson helps lead the Rainbow Warriors to victory here today. Stutzman, a couple of touchdown reception. Thompson, a couple of touchdown runs. And Hawaii wins it 35 to 21 over the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes, spoiling the homecoming for Tulsa. For gay reasons, it's Bill Lance and so long from Tulsa. The final again, 35-21 Hawaii over Tulsa. Hope you've enjoyed it today. You've been watching WAC College football coverage on Fox Sports Net. Coming up next, a and Oklahoma. So long, everybody.